Hello, monster fans. It's John Campbell and Brendan Jones from the show you're about to listen to. Uh, if you're smart <laughs> and if you're brave. Yes, it's a spooky, spooky show. But if you want even more spookiness, you can head over to the Punch Up Entertainment Podbean patron page. That's patron.podbean.com slash punch up, where you can binge three whole seasons of this show. Ooh, that <laughs> gotta hurt. And if you want even more spooky thrills, come by my apartment. <laughs> oh, wait, that's inappropriate. That sorry. isn't. Yeah, we've talked about this, Brendan. Uh, I'm very sorry. Yeah, uh, so you can head over there and get uh, not only full archive seasons of this very show, but you can also get the exclusive only patron show, Nights Talking, where Brendan and I walk through the adventures of Carl Kolchak, uh, where, uh, you know, we, we, we follow the Night Stalker on his many, many escapades. And if you don't know who Carl Kolchak is, why are you listening to us right now? <laughs> Very <laughs> true. Uh, so once again, that link is patron.podbean.com slash punch up. And now enjoy the spookiness. Mr. Carl Emily feels it would be a little unkind to present this picture without just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to... Uh, well, we warned you. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters, the show where we watch every Universal Monster movie in chronological order. I'm John Campbell. With me, as always, Brendan Jones. Hello, John. Hello, listeners. How are you doing, Brendan? Well, <clears throat> I'm I'm just fine, and I can say this: I'm doing better than Karis. Uh <laughs> Aren't we all? I can also say this: I'm doing better than Lon Chaney Jr. Yeah, yeah, I'd say we're both in a in a better place, just generally speaking, than the great <laughs> LCJ. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't that what they called him back then? <laughs> they should we're gonna have, do another didn't. mummy picture with LCJ. Yeah. <laughs> LCJ, you ready to uh, put on the mummy makeup again? He was not, by the way. <laughs> I don't blame him. This seems like be, the worst. He, he had to be bribed back into this thing by uh, the producers going. The next one we're going to do with you, it's going to be a real part. You're going to have, you're going to be all dressed up, and you're going to have lines. It's going to be great. Yeah, no. Ooh. <laughs> you could, I mean, other than the fact he had the name mm -hmm. uh, and his father's name, uh, which isn't actually his name anyway. But right, um, right. other than that, you could put anybody for what they are doing with this character. You could put anybody in these bad. Because this is the worst so far this outfit has looked also. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a mummy wrapping. Well, that's, I thought the exact same thing the whole time I was watching this movie. I'm just going, what do they need Lon Chaney Jr. for? Like, it doesn't, you don't need anybody. I mean, who cares? It could be anybody. No. And, and um, if you want, if the mummy is primarily going to have a visual impact, which is at, unlike a lot of the Universal monsters, that's all the mummy really has except for the very first movie. Um, if you're going for a visual impact as a creature, uh, find a, a, a skinny dude to yeah. wrap up in these wrappings. Find someone who's cadaverous. Hell, you, you got John Carradine. I was just about thing. to say, John, throw John Carradine in him. Though he has that great voice, which that's kind of his whole thing as well. So that would be a shame to not have his voice. It's true. And, and they use his voice. However, they not for not much else <laughs> other nope. than to it sounds good saying egyptian saying prayers or whatever god jibber of a, jabber gods of anubis oh blah, blah, we'll blah. be talking we'll be talking about all the great so, stuff so here we are it's 1944 it's the mummy's ghost there's not a ghost in sight in this picture nope 
They lied to us again. <laughs> There's a reincarnated Egyptian princess. Yeah. So they could have said the mummy's girlfriend's reincarnated spirit could have been the name of this movie. Spirit of the mummy. Spirit of the mummy. These people. Yep. We always fix it. You know, we we just in two minutes came up with something better there <laughs> than these big time execs of 1944. Yeah, believe it or not, um, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. We're putting more thought into it than they did, but I, I you know, oh, we, oh, we so much are, <laughs> we so much are. So uh, I have so many questions about this thing, but anyway. I have a lot of questions uh, about it as well. Uh, but uh, Brendan, you have just a few tidbits for us, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. It, uh, the days of the I, I'm not saying this because I can't see what's coming down the line, but the days of the the well structured, uh, you know, college thesis of each film those are gone because yeah. uh there's not you know even that book i've been reading and i will quote directly from it for for today but um you know they, they have lots of cool anecdotes but but there's just not you can't really take these movies apart and and look for the fascinating behind the scenes stuff because at this point this is a sausage factory it's yeah. like are they gonna oh that that one that batch of sausages they'd made that one month we want to talk about in depth. No, it's just another piece of sausage. Well, and, and uh, nobody <laughs> then was bothering to document any of this. They never thought for no. uh, we better we better keep the records of the making of this classic. Well, you know, all you need to know is they shot it in a fucking week. Sorry for the language, people, but honestly, this was a one week jobber, a sixty one minute movie made in a week. It shows. Um, it shows. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, here are some tidbits. This yes. film was directed by. Uh, we haven't spoken of him before, Reginald LeBorg. Uh, this was actually only his second film. He had been just working his way up through the system there uh, at Universal and had had every kind of, like he even was, one of the jobs he had was chore choreographing dance sequences in a couple of the Universal musicals. Well, that explains um, all the dance sequences in this movie. It really does, doesn't <laughs> it? Uh, <clears throat> and the reason he ends up doing Mummy's Ghost as film number two is essentially the original director whose name has been lost to time like not even the guys who wrote that book they we don't know who was officially signed for this movie but that person had an accent and they just grabbed leborg and was like here's a script i mean it's i think the way universal was doing these and not all of their films but primarily these right. genre pictures is we have we have a block of time this is where it's going to be done and so literally they didn't care it's yeah. like uh, that person had an accident you're going to put the production on hold no we're going to be filming just grab someone who knows how a camera works and I, they did i feel like that's particularly <clears throat> the case on the mummy franchise yeah 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 very these, very these much are so. even lower than the other b pictures they were making yeah sadly uh mummy becomes their dumping ground i have a feeling or or just the they're the quickie product yeah um a shame. Mummies are a great concept. Yeah, but anyway, they're a great Leborg, Leborg went on to have a career of a lot of B-horror pictures, which is interesting because he himself was like, well, I never saw myself going that way. But that's that's what he became. Um, now, I mentioned that the original director had had an accident and they had to replace him. And hey, that's not the only instance uh, where an accident <laughs> affected this production. The part of the Egyptian ingenue. Mm. Amina mm -hmm. was originally uh, cast and was going to be portrayed by exotic one named actress Aquanetta, who Ooh. I have mentioned before. Yes. She was the star of <laughs> the indelible uh, Captive Wild Woman and its sequel, Jungle Woman. Uh, and if you've ever wanted to see a movie where uh, a, a, an ape is uh, chemically turned into a sexy lady, but can't deny her savage apeness. Those are the ones you want to watch. Uh, I mean, I'm, putting, um, I'm I'm looking for that on streaming services right now. They they're not good. But if you're <laughs> going to watch one, watch watch Captain Wild Woman. Jungle Woman is widely claimed, even by the authors of that book. I keep mentioning. Uh, they're like this is the bottom of the Universal barrel. Um, anyway, uh, so on the very first day of filming Mummy's Ghost, the very first day. They filmed the scene, I, I believe it's the one that we see where Amina faints, passes out when she she feels the call of the mummy. and She, she and does she that faints. a few times. <clears throat> she does that a few times, so it might not actually be that scene. <laughs> they, you know, they shot out a sequence. 
But uh, on the very first day of filming, she passed out, did the job, but she passed out onto what were supposed to be paper mache rocks, prop rocks. Right. They were real rocks, Uh-oh. and she, she brained herself. Uh, she was unconscious for half an hour, uh, diagnosed with a concussion, and did the studio say, let's give you a week or so? Nope. They literally, that day, said, uh, and reached into the contract player grab bag and pulled out Ramsey Ames, who ends up playing Amina. Who is so not Aquanetta, exotic at all. Uh, no, she is-ish. Uh, I mean, but she's certainly not Egyptian. But, well, no, uh, they, no. Uh, she, I can't remember what they said her background was. Oh. I mean, she's she's full on American. That's all that matters. No, it's a joke. Well, they even uh, but, they even make a point in the movie of saying that she is of Egyptian ancestry while not yes. being from Egypt. Right. She's not attempting any kind of accent of like, oh, I have just moved to your strange country. Um, Which, no, you know, yeah, I, was, I was thankful for that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Egyptian American, I guess. Yeah. But it just seems, and Aquanetta, like in later uh, interviews and stuff, was still a little. I mean, I get it. She can't sit there going, oh man, my career was riding on this mummy's ghost thing. But, uh, you know, if you've only been captive wild woman and jungle woman, then maybe you're looking for anything. She still was kind of grousy about it. Like, look, man, it was their fault that it was a real rock I fell onto. They could have given me a few days to recuperate. Yeah. She goes, weirdly, that accident, she kept having physical problems because of it later in life. Also, uh, they kept Lon around. Who knows what kind of accidents he was getting into <laughs> left and right. Yeah, he was causing. Um <laughs> All right, so uh, I was speaking of which, and, and this is the last <laughs> little tidbit. Finally, uh, here's a great tidbit about our favorite boozy punching bag. <laughs> like call him Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, and this one is lifted directly. I didn't even paraphrase this one. It's just too good. Uh, from my oft-referenced source, which the full name is Universal Horrors, uh, the studio's classic period. I think it says 1930, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Um, by Tom Weaver. And Michael and John uh, Brunas. So, cite those um, sources. Yeah, I need to cite those sources. Those guys have been such a great reference. Um, so, the quote is When United Press reporter Frederick C. Othman visited the set of The Mummy's Ghost, Cheney was indulging in his second favorite pastime Uh-oh. belly aching. <laughs> Karis was his least favorite horror role, uh, and not without justification. The quote from him is, I sweat and I can't wipe it away. I itch and I can't scratch. (laughs) A steam-cooked Cheney grumbled to the UP reporter as makeup men sprinkled him with more Fuller's Earth. Cheney also told the writer that movie audiences were nuts for spending their money to see mummy films. And my little this is the uh, first time I I don't have any issue with anything he's saying. Uh. Absolutely, my my last little uh, tie up there was Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> uh, I yeah. do love that quote. I, the thing is, as I say, the mummy as a concept from that very first movie is interesting. Where I think it totally. I mean, this is me. We're not even talking about the movie yet. This one, but <clears throat> every one of the ones post the original mummy they took away this character's autonomy and he becomes just a walking, he's a kill machine pet who's also lumbering and slow. And there's no glimmer of intelligence behind there. If this is what immortal life is where you're, you can always come back from the dead. But if, if you're just this mindless lumbering thing, it's, there's nothing there. At least when Karloff is Imhotep, uh, you know, he's out of the wrappings really quick, but the same thing is he is a thinking, feeling uh, horror monster, and that's what you want. Every every time we watch one of these mummy sequels, it reminds me of how good that first mummy was. Like, the, it, it, it yeah. re-solidifies and makes it even better, where you're just like, oh, wait, that one was good. Granted, it was literally a retread of Dracula. Yeah, I mean, it's but, it's not the best by any means, but boy, in comparison to this. I mean, I still think the best Mommy movie is that Brendan Fraser one. Really, I do. <laughs> well, at this point, uh, I mean, I if we decide to move on to the Hammer stuff, and we should start talking about that, we're getting yeah. close-ish I mean, that's, towards that's, the end of that's this That's certainly quest. probably where we're going to go next. And actually, I really I, like that, that, mom, that first Mommy movie with Cushing and Lee. 
I, I remember parts of it, but it has been so long. So I would have to revisit. They, as as Hammer's concerned, they did not spend too much time with the mummy anyway. They also must have seen no. there were so many limitations to this character. They they could do an endless series of Dracula and Frankenstein films. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, just vampire films uh, that they were kind of basing on Carmilla and stuff yeah, there's, like that. Yeah, there's, there's going to have to be, when we get to Hammer, there's going to have to be more negotiation about what exactly we're covering and because we, we can get lost in the weeds of that. Uh, I don't know why they, I mean, they did, uh, is it uh, Curse of the Werewolf? The, with Oliver Reed? Yeah, with Oliver Reed. Yeah, it's Curse of the Which Werewolf. is actually really good. I love that one. Uh, but I, I I don't know why they they really did not pursue uh, werewolves much. No. Um, and that's interesting because werewolves are that that's that's good subject matter. All these characters can be great. It yes. just means someone has to put thought into it and figure out what makes them scary and also what makes them interesting. And speaking of how not to do it, let's talk about the mummy's <laughs> ghost today. Well, first we got to talk about this poster. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is an improvement over some of the more recent posters we've talked about. It's uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 at least this one feels like they're trying with something. Although I will say the hand drawn face of the sarcophagus there <laughs> looking a little cheap to me. Uh, yeah, well, they're not. I mean, they're not making a representation. It is not as in like a modeled three D thing. It's just this the general shape of a sarcophagus yeah. uh, to break up the picture pane and draw your eye towards the logo. That's all pretty smart. Mm-hmm. But then they do want to let you know this is supposed to be a sarcophagus. So then they do just these, as you say, just sort of hand drawn, very basic and certainly not very Egyptian. Here's a Pharaoh princess face on it. And that is, it's really bad. Uh, then, we, of course, we have a, a big Chorus face and hand uh, yeah. in green, always the scariest of colors on these posters. It is, I can't even look at it. It's that scary. I do like that they're now saying starring Lon Chaney as Karis, the mummy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, but it, not in the uh, film credits. In the film credits, he just gets an and mm-hmm. Lon Chaney as the mummy. Yeah. But here, they're putting him top bill on the poster. Uh, and then uh, sexy full body, yeah, uh, Ramsey Ames. Boy, they're they're saying if you're once again if you're not here for the mummy, check out those legs. <laughs> She's got check gams. Out the mummy. Hello, <laughs> the mummy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's got legs, and she knows how to use them, uh, mm-hmm. as we see in the film. I, I don't uh, actually then... know that she uses her legs very well in the movie. She's constantly falling down. That's true. She's constantly <laughs> falling down or fainting, and then being carried places. Yeah. Um, oh, poor So, lady. I would say she actually maybe, I, I think she needs to have her legs looked at by a professional. Um, <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> um, she's got some equilibrium uh, problems, you know, some vertigo <laughs> stuff going on. You get pictures here, uh, the headshots of of people from the movie, uh, but I I don't know who they are. <laughs> like guy in the hat, uh, was it, he the I sheriff think, guy? I think that's the inspector. The inspector guy. Yeah. Then guy with mustache. That's not the boyfriend. The boyfriend's not on this poster. No, which is really interesting. I noticed that too. The guy with the mustache looks like Lon Chaney. I was gonna that. I I think that's just Lon Chaney, which he doesn't appear like this no. in the film. He is there, just in there, the. But there's no character that does appear like this in the film. No, and then you get George Zuko yeah. uh, as the strangely. Still not dead, even though we saw him die before. Uh, that's definitely one of my notes that we'll be uh, discussed. <laughs> I was uh, certain. So boyfriend doesn't make the poster. Nope. Um, and uh, neither does the dog. <laughs> this another, is another hero that, dog. Another hero dog. This film hinges on a dog's uh, participation. A dog who is named Peanuts. Well, but, yeah, but I heard something different. Boy, did I too. A few <laughs> times. And I was like, that's interesting. That, I just, like, three, four times I heard it, and I'm like, that that can't be right. But it's it's clear as day, something else. <laughs> What's that, penis? What? Where <laughs> I, is she, penis? I mean, Show me where she is, penis. I think a lot of it has to do with the, the, the low quality of the, the mics at the time. 
you know, that, that some of that's getting garbled, but boy, they run over that fast. And you're like, what was that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to back up and I was still, I'm like, you might, you might want to have had like a, a quick just onset meeting with the director and the cast going, guys, I'm really going to need you to hit that T hard. Yeah. Peanuts. <laughs> Peanuts. <laughs> oh, did you miss me? Peanuts. Peanuts. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. But that did make me laugh at least. I was oh, like, oh, yeah. oh, man. This movie has a dog named Penis. Well, I just, I was <laughs> like, they, they keep, they keep calling this dog Penis, and, but it, it's, they're, no one's drawing attention to it. They're all just cool with a dog named Penis. <laughs> yeah. That's the dog's it was, name. John, it was another time. It was. It was, a, it was a different time. And then, of course, finally, we have the, uh, the, the brood tana leaves giving an sure. ominous, you know, yeah. wafting uh, of uh, of terror. Uh, yeah. And speaking of terror, let's talk about the taglines that they use. Man, they're, they're pretty lame, except for another one that I, I like a lot as a something I need to put on a business card. No chains <clears throat> can hold it. No tomb can seal it. That's not the one. That no, no, no. One. I, I think I know which one it is. We'll 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 say that. <laughs> There's only three here. Uh, and of course, all new terror, which is just a straight up lie. It's the same old crappy mummy from the other movies. Exactly. There's nothing. There's really nothing new about this. That's the one that's on the poster. All new terror. Yeah. If you thought this was the old terror from like two years ago, nope. Uh, you know what? But it's not terror. It's thrills that fill the tills. So I don't. I don't know what they, know. they keep promoting. I don't know. Terror it should be thrills. Terror has no rhyme. That- <laughs> and then of course yeah brendan gotta go on uh i think on on your business cards on your dating profiles yeah. nameless yes. fleshless deathless absolutely all the lessons all the lessons i want those on a t-shirt that would also be great <laughs> nameless fleshless deathless hi how you doing <laughs> or that'd be a great uh law firm <laughs> <laughs> i'm handled by nameless fleshless and deathless <laughs> they're great they're great. Oh, they just did my divorce. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, it's uh, more entertainment than I got out of the film. <laughs> I, will, I will say, other than the dog named Penis, not a laugh in this picture. Not a laugh. <laughs> Although I will say, they didn't try in this one. Yeah, which actually this, I, I, I appreciated, which, I, you know, I actually think this is a terrible movie. But I yeah. think of the Mummy sequels, this is it's, the best. It actually, the guys in the book, though, again, this is, this is, um, these are low bars we're talking about. Oh. The guys in the book do say, they call this arguably the best of the Chorus films. Yeah. Uh, and I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, that... to me, before we get into it, John, I just yeah. got to say, I'm putting out a hypothetical to you. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're given this job and you know this is going to be a tight one that you've got to write this. This You're going to be doing the third Chorus film. Yeah. Don't you think maybe you'd watch the other two? Or even, because uh, you know the studio has like a, a library of scripts. Don't you think you might have just checked out the, the previous two scripts? Because I, there are yeah. these arbitrary, arbitrary retroactive changing of things from the first two films. It wouldn't bother me so much if this were just another mummy film. Well, who, that's who the cares? weirdest but thing. This is a direct sequel. The the mummy the Karis mummy movies have had the the most continuity between them, to some degree. And and the banding exposition is mentioned. This is happening in the same. Is it New England town, Mapleton, or yeah, whatever the hell yeah. it was called? Um, it's the same town. Obviously, we're dealing with the same mummy who was supposedly burned up in the the previous film. Right. But we have Andoweb back, and we saw him die. Yep. We have it's one of my um, first notes. Didn't he die? Um, it's actually my second <laughs> note. Didn't George Zuko and, die? And the the uh, mysterious cult of 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 Karnak is now um, is now Arkham mm-hmm. or Arkham, and I'm like, well, maybe they were Lovecraft fans. That's cute. Uh, or Arkham. Um, you know what? I'm After like, the failures of the past, they've rebranded. It's a new, it's a new yeah. world for them. They just, you know, it's going to get a fresh start. Man, that really because bugs me. I will also say, number one, I love John Carradine. Uh, he doesn't have much sure. to do in this movie. He didn't have much to do in nope. the previous movie. I'm bummed about nope. the 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 lack that, uh, of anything they're giving to the great John Carradine. 
Don't uh, worry, he's about to be Dracula real soon. I yeah, I, and I I, I I don't have much memory of him as Dracula, so that's probably not, not a good. not a good thing. Is what I'm just <laughs> saying. I I remember House of Frankenstein. I remember that Dracula's in it, but I his uh, performance left no impression on me. He's doing John Carradine. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, it's, you kind of. You kind of get John Carradine thing. no matter what. You know, you're, you're paying to yeah. get John Carradine, who's great and is a creepy presence. But yep. I was watching this movie going, oh, wow, finally a high priest from Egypt who's doing his job well. Nope. They nope. have to fuck it. He has to go down the same yep. path they all do. He goes down the same damn path. What I think is they need to, this, this cult needs to start uh, bringing in homosexual men as priests yeah. or possibly... Uh, asexual. Can I just uh, say, uh, recognizing people? If we turn on the next movie and the new high priest is Paul Lind, <laughs> that'd be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I don't care. You go ahead and keep her. Oh, Karis. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Sure, she's she's attractive if you're into that kind of thing. Oh. But I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a confirmed uh, bachelor. And it's so late in the day, and there's thought voiceover. We need to get to that anyway. Let's start this thing. Uh, oh, yeah. well, right man. off the bat, when we got to that point. I was like, "What? <laughs> God damn you, movie!" And I'd already been saying that for fifty minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing is, I, the, it is the lowest of bars to say this is the best Caris picture. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of it is what we were talking about, which is just that there is no attempt at lame jokes or anything in it. It is right. a, a a fairly straightforward mummy picture. Uh, the fact that they that they they chose to do it a, a fairly straight melodrama with it that's okay i was it was just it wasn't well done the fact that it has a downer ending i had to give props to that's the best we'll get there too truly i was like the best thing about the movie yeah i was like wow didn't see that coming all right yeah that's an um, actual bold choice for one of these movies and you will rarely and, hear me say that on and here. ramsey ames is not bad and she's very attractive mm -hmm. so again for 1944 i was like all right i would have sat through 61 minutes of this and gone Oh, I got my quarter's worth or whatever the hell it costs to see this movie. There were legs on the poster. There were legs in the picture. <laughs> Two Success. thumbs up. Uh, the, by the way, uh, Ramsey yeah. Ames of Spanish descent. There you go. Uh, it's just that they they obviously went to their their pool of talent and said, mm -hmm. do we have anyone exotic-ish? Do we have an Aquanetta-esque <laughs> contract yeah. player we can plug in? I I will say I I thought she was pretty good, uh, but this is up there in competition for the most boring male lead we've ever had in one of these movies. Boring male lead, <laughs> boring. I mean, actively was... not a good actor. I feel like no, not a good actor. And again, <clears throat> I was like, am I watching Grease? Because this was a, a college freshman who's clearly thirty eight years oh, old. And I think his friend <laughs> at the college is even older. His friend is like forty five. <laughs> I know. Hey, you gotta you gotta take that young gal to the dance tonight. <laughs> I'll be there as a chaperone. Yeah. I'm get very out of, old. Get out of here, Dad! I told you not to come to college anymore. <laughs> oh my God! All right, yeah, so let's this, we this not, uh... we do start the picture. By the way, still on gowns, Vera West, still sticking Thank around. God. You know, and I apologize to our listeners. Very often, I know that you guys don't give a shit about any of the stuff we talk about. <laughs> We should just at the top of each podcast let you know that Vera West is in charge of the gowns. I'm just so you can turn it off, and then you're like going, "Good, good, yeah. done." Yeah, perfect. I just want to make sure Vera West worked out. Okay, great, great. Now, what's interesting <laughs> is uh, I do see this is a Jack Pierce job, though. Yeah, not at this his point, finest work though by any no, stretch of the imagination. Point, he doesn't care either, and also Lon's been bitching. They did talk a little bit about uh, seriously. Yeah, uh, they yeah. Did well, no, it's true though. This. In, in the books, um, uh, the, they did have another good quote where they're like going, they, they themselves are posing questions in the movie going, what did Karis do after in this gap of time since the supposed burning death? Has he just been hanging out in this new New England town surviving off of twigs and berries? And then they, then in quotes they go, in parentheses they say, a lot of twigs, a lot of berries, <laughs> judging from his waistband. <laughs> he's he's chunked up a little bit. He's a, He's a heftier mummy mm -hmm. and at this point the costume is two pieces it's a top and bottom just like long johns yeah that they 
uh, a shirt and pants that they just stretch on him. Um, and the mask is full on a, a full rubber head mask, which is also very clearly evident yeah. in this movie. So it's no longer, I mean, Jack Pierce is there just to oversee it and go, yeah, 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 great. He probably spends now 15 minutes getting him into that. And then he's on to a movie he cares about. Yep. So this isn't the perfectionist Jack Pierce. He's like going, what? You're doing another one? Fine. Here's the mold for that mask I made for him last time. Fill it in. Well, and as when we talked about. Top and bottom on, put dirt on him. Yeah. The end. Cheney is not the template that Karloff was as well. That's that's another part of it, I think, that is just I Cheney's not giving you much to build off of. So and these movies are so shitty that why should Pierce bother to break a sweat? They're so kind, the guys who wrote that book, about I mean, they do say this is the best of the Cars films, and they say it's because Karis here, Lon Chaney Jr., is given something to work with. They have now retroactively shoehorned in a romance plot that wasn't ever there before. So there are a couple of scenes where Karis emotes slightly to show disappointment or longing. Well, and he, he actually he... has motivation and wants in the movie, which is yeah. unusual for him, but they are very faint. And, and almost still, he's not to... a character. No, and almost impossible to project those through what's essentially a Halloween rubber mask. Now it's, it's, it's so yeah. there's nothing. And plus he still has the one arm totally useless. Uh, he's, shuffling he's, carrying, he's, got, he's got a lame leg too. Carrying a woman. Yeah. This is where all the parodies of mummy. When you see people making fun of it in, in yeah. what, comedies, people do the arm and people drag that leg. And that's what a mummy is. Because And, and all that does is create, absolutely no dread or imposing nature whatsoever i don't understand in this movie where someone goes because at one point uh she sees Karis uh walking i guess next to their car mm -hmm. and she goes ah and, and all you see is a shadow and he's like whoa what's the matter says boyfriend guy she goes oh i just saw a shadow this is not a subtle ninja like figure there's no way that you could see him out of the corner of your eye and then he's just gone no, but but I'm now going to start working on a movie called Ninja Mummy because that sounds amazing. <laughs> I, I know. When they have groups of people going after him, I'm like, how hard is this really? <laughs> how hard the, is it anytime really? Anytime he gets away from people, it's always insane yeah. to me. It's just like he's coming. I don't care how dirty um, those wraps are too, but they will reflect moonlight. Yeah. He's still walking around in light gray, essentially. Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not disappearing into the shadows. I mean, it, it's uh, embarrassing, really. Like, you watch, like, here comes the mummy, and then you just watch him shuffle, and sh and just, like, I'm sitting there going, oh, Jesus Christ. When it gets to the last part of the movie, oh, I can't wait to talk yeah. about that, too. About, uh, like, well, let's, oh, let's, he's not there. All let's, right, yes. Let's, let's start, start here start at the it. top with uh, <clears throat> with John Carradine as Yusuf Bey. Uh, Yusuf Bey, who's the, the next in line, uh, the next next in line, to take over as high priest of the cult of not Karnak anymore, mm -hmm. Arkham. Arkham. And it's still run by the seemingly dead George Zuko, which I guess he faked us out with that. Uh, oh, I do have to throw in another bit. Did you catch this? It starts with first you you see stock footage of the Sphinx. Yeah. And then you see um, supposedly Yusef Bey walking up the steps of the temple. He's about to go in. Yeah. And it's just reused footage of the the first with mummy's tomb and 100%. that's actually george zuko this, this isn't so it's george zuko going to see george zuko I, it, um, it, it, I mean number one it's clearly not john carradine and i'm going right. i'm almost certain i've seen this footage before so i didn't yes. i didn't immediately peg it as what it was but i knew i, I had seen it that. before i just love the fact that george zuko younger george zuko is visiting old shaky george zuko well, George, oh Zuko, I mean, the man just can't die. Apparently, is what we've learned no. here. No, uh, because oh here he is God. again talking about. Uh, and yeah, I do think there needs to be a little question on there about like, do you like the ladies? <laughs> yeah, you're not by any chance Look, you're attracted going to, to be me. distracted by whoever Karis gets the hots for. <laughs> Don't let that screw up your mission. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, he's there to tell him that he needs to undertake this mission. We get some previously on the mummy and more of Karis's backstory. Uh, it's been changed. Has it been changed? It's the same. He no. Was... The whole thing about the love story is completely different. I thought that was the uh, previous thing. That's why he forever protected her in the. Well, they changed this thing where uh, she, uh, Ananka, 
-hmm. she gets cursed by the gods for this forbidden love mm -hmm. so she dies and Karis is buried with her uh but the whole thing of before it was Karis was her bodyguard protector not her lover and wasn't buried with her was buried in a an adjoining tomb right. to watch over her for all time i thought they i thought they had been in love though no oh wow this love story thing is brand new. Maybe I'm just conflating um, the, the Karloff movie. Which, yeah. I mean, they had purposely kind of altered that when they decided they're doing Karis instead yeah. of Imhotep. So this love story thing, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, they tried to retroactively say, no, no, this has been the case all along. And they certainly added the all this shit about her being able to transfer into the body of somebody else. Like, that's all, yep. all new. And also, if you could do that at any point... Why has she been hanging out in a mummified body for thousands of years? Yeah. Oh, there's. I have so many questions about the mythology of Karis and Ananka. But the most important thing that you should learn, just like Yusef Bey had to learn, is nine tana leaves. You boil them up. Karis is go is coming for it. Where it doesn't matter where he is, he's going to be like. But we've uh -oh, we've lost tana leaves. We've lost the more than nine tana leaves. He's the most powerful creature in the world. They don't talk about That's that. That's gone. That's been. That's two movies back, and they didn't talk about it in the last one either. I'm like, dude, what happens once you go with 10 Tana Leaves? Can you even imagine? That's still the most uh, exciting thing they've introduced, and they've done nothing with it. Nope. <laughs> they abandoned it because it made the films too exciting, John. <laughs> Everybody just calm about, down. Now it's just about whoever the hell he can get in the course of a couple of days of the full moon. I mean, essentially it's no longer about he will become a force. Unlike the, the world has ever seen before. That's the problem with us nineties kids, right? We grew up with a mummy who had superpowers. That's your problem. <laughs> youngster. Arnold Vosloo could control the elements, man. He could control the elements. He could make storms of scarab beetles and mm -hmm. all kinds be of a big shit. sand could... face and eat a plane. Sand face. I'd like to see LCJ pull that off. <laughs> no. You He's... want a sand face? I'll give you a sand face. <laughs> then he just face plants in some sand. Uh... He just falls forward into a sand dune. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, how is that different than any other day of his life? <laughs> well, sometimes it's gravel. <laughs> I will say, I, I was thinking every time he... <laughs> He shambles around. I am like, this is just normal footage of LCJ, right? <laughs> oh, great. He's in his pajamas. We can use this for the mummy movie. <laughs> Here he comes. We, we have so much B footage of him shambling about the studio lot. You know, we're laughing about LCJ, but we're going to miss him when he's no longer in these films. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> Okay, so anyway, uh, Yusef Bey is learning the ways of the high priest. Yes, and then we cut to more of the backstory of the previous movies in a classroom with this professor, Professor Norman, uh, who Who's is... Who's a carryover from the previous movie. Yeah, because we get a whole thing about he's, he's talk, talking about Banning's expedition, and oh yes, then the mummy came and killed him. One of the things I do like about this movie Everyone just accepts that there's a mummy. We're dealing with a mummy. Let's go on. Like, there's no, like, it can't possibly be a mummy. I do like it. At the same time, I don't. Because there's such weird high hilarity at the various points in this movie where a group of concerned citizens or the sheriff or whatever, they're all banding together. And they're like going, all right, if the mummy comes this way. <laughs> and and it's just goofy. Like, I'm kind of laughing. It is goofy. Like, um, the mummy. I, I, they know that this is Karis. Yeah. So I would, um, I would much prefer if they go if Karis comes this way. <laughs> That's because when right. they're going if the mummy, and by that the guy who's all wrapped up, if yeah. he comes this way. Oh man. Have you seen but this yes. mummy? One thing that threw me though is he's telling this to his students. Yeah. This is a uh, uh, Norman Professor Norman talking to his students, um, and they're stunned by the story. This still seems to me like this would be, and everyone, I guess, has heard it, you know, sort of already secondhand. This would have been the hugest news ever. Well, the, a living undead creature 
who killed people in this small American town. There is there is just one of the students ago. who does say, yeah, but I heard it was just a guy dressed up as a mummy. It wasn't really sure. a mummy. To which you're sure. like, okay, I could believe that some people are like, yeah, it was just a crazy Government guy. Government disinformation. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Government doesn't want you to know. Somewhere uh, on also, an early version of Fox News, they're going, no, it wasn't a mummy. It was just a guy dressed as a mummy. Some kind of well, fiend but, killing. But Norman says, like, hundreds of people saw him. Yeah. And I, I'm flashing back to the previous movie going, no, well, maybe they, eight. They can't maybe afford eight they can't afford to put hundreds of people on screen in these movies. I, I, yeah, <laughs> but I still even in that small town, not yeah. everyone walked out and was like, oh, my God, there's a mummy in the street. Right. I, I saw that movie just a few weeks ago. I'm like, no, at most, maybe there were 10 eyewitnesses over the course of his. Brief I want, I want you in that class going, that's no, it had to only be like <laughs> eight people. Yeah, but then hey, they I each you, see Norman, they each because, told eight people, and then it just um, spread like this. Well, everyone just says they were eyewitnesses, but really it was a friend. Oh uh, yeah, friend of a friend. I saw the mommy. Yeah, he came right by here. Uh, he stepped in, asked if the we had a bathroom that the public could use, and I said no, <laughs> not unless you're a paying customer. And so he bought a, a pack of gum, and then he went and whizzed yeah. right there in that bathroom. <laughs> And then he went out and killed some more people. Yeah, you, you guys want to take a sample of the mummy whiz? <laughs> this is the priceless Egyptian coin he paid for with the uh, for the bubblegum with, right here. <laughs> He's a juicy fruit guy. <laughs> I I thought he was a Beeman's guy. <laughs> nope, juicy fruit. Beeman's like the way I threw in a a, a period specific. There gum. you go. Yeah. Uh, I do my research for my stupid little jokes. Okay. Uh, so the let's see. They're talking about. Uh, oh yeah, he saw the. I saw him. I saw him with my own eyes, and and uh, uh, and then I like uh, the 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 number one. The bell rings in college, which I always find hilarious in movies. <laughs> oh, it's the end of class in college. Uh, and so he, uh, he, I, 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 Professor Norman goes, all right, uh, next class, we're actually going to talk about, you know, the history of Egypt and not just a bunch of stuff about mummies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was really off topic. This hour got away from me, but next week back to what you're actually paying me to learn about. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, no, no more, no more talk about monsters, even though they're totally real. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they're, they're leaving and we find Tom and his friend who's must have a name but i who could remember dude i couldn't remember that the boyfriend's name was tom good on you yeah tom hervey yeah hervey uh, right played by robert lowry this who guy is boring as hell holy God. boring bland looking yeah and and i will say that also script wise they they just made him a a block of wood this guy has nothing on his mind other than Golly, I love my girlfriend and hope she'll marry me someday. Uh, I'm looking at his IMDb. He had a very, very long career with tons Good. of parts. I mean, just I, just boring all kinds of movies, most of which <laughs> I've never heard of. Um, but I, I will say I've never heard of this show. But however, I love that he was on a show called Cowboy G-Men. Oh, damn. <laughs> I think it's time for a, a reboot. Well, I... The I yeah it sounds great yeah cowboy g-men um best of both worlds there and he also did an episode really? of the uh 1950s adventures of superman <gasps> all right i'll be looking it up oh i remember that episode it was the extremely boring one <laughs> <laughs> i think superman stood there while people shot at him um yeah <laughs> but ducked when they threw their guns <laughs> i always love that uh, and then he jumped out a window. Uh, he, you know, he always jumped out a window. He had uh, that really low slung cape. Never got that. Yeah. Why the hell is the, the scoop on that cape all the way down the middle of his back? No, I, I can't fix it, Lois. I just don't understand. It just keeps falling <laughs> like that. You uh, and your earth ways of <laughs> making clothing. So Tom and his friend are talking about, they're like, wow, do you really believe all that stuff about the mummy? Uh, and his friend just goes, hey, you know, your girlfriend Amina would probably be interested in that. <laughs> and Tom's like, why? And he says, because she's, well, she's Egyptian. Well, she's Egyptian. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Oddly progressive scene for uh, the, the, the 1940s here when he's just like, well, you just assume because she's of Egyptian heritage she'd be interested in mummies? I thought that was great. That's but pretty the problem is, is that of you. 
problem is within five minutes, just the very word Egypt or mummy, and Amina just goes, uh. yeah. <laughs> she's already in like a, a, a trance. I'm like, no, I think the friend had it right. I want to cut back to like, his friend going, told you. Told you. Uh, yeah, so uh, he, he chides him for being culturally insensitive, even though he's immediately proven right. Uh, and he <laughs> walks into, what is this place? A library? I don't know what this is. I guess it's a library, but it seems office-like. Yeah, it seems office-like, and Amina is behind a desk, and this is where we meet Penis the dog. I'm sorry, Peanuts the dog. She may be, like, student librarian, because she, cause he she does it. She seems to have one, an official position. He, and he does say, like, hey, isn't your gig up aren't you almost off work or something so maybe she kind of is the student librarian the thing i couldn't figure out though is why it would be okay to leave the dog here especially a dog named penis yeah you know that's that's <laughs> gonna cause all the students in this library to laugh constantly which is very disruptive in a library <laughs> it is yeah that's the you know, this is the rescue run when you name your dog he penis comes like, oh, hey yeah did you miss me penis is like one of the first things he says to the yeah. dog and i was like did i hear that right and then the second time in the scene the dog is referred to it again sounds like penis yeah it's maybe the third appearance of this dog in the film where someone clearly says peanuts and i was like oh i turned okay. on the subtitles for this i went what is it oh it's peanuts because it was so clearly penis like it was yeah, just it was. it was you know you love like, penis I, amina yeah yeah it's, it's like ah penis has really uh grown fond of you amina I believe Penis is very fond of me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. We're in sixth grade again. And we were hey, this movie started it, not us. This movie did start it. And I dare you, listeners, if you're ever going to watch The Mummy's Ghost, and why would you? Yeah, please don't. But watch that first scene. It's only like five minutes in the movie or yeah. six. And tell us it's not what the guy is saying. It sounds like Penis. Anyway. <laughs> I think he was pulling something and uh could it, be could be and he's like going if i i'll just in innocently later go i said it just way it was in yeah. the script i said hey peanuts i did notice he did a, a little sly take to camera every time he said the dog's <laughs> name hi there penis mm. no i said peanuts did <laughs> oh no, well the, that was the subtitle of the movie the mummy's <laughs> ghost colon <laughs> i said peanuts <laughs> uh all right so yeah so he gets the dog back from her and yes then he uh well he finds a book about uh, on her desk is a book about mummies that apparently professor norman had put on hold and he goes hey uh, you know norman was just talking about this he's mummy crazy uh you know and uh and immediately yeah she's like her eyes go wide and she sort of freezes she's like mummies egypt this is, the, this is the first thing we see of her in the movie and i i was very re ready to write her off because i've never seen her in anything else before and i was like oh she's going to be terrible and i will say that the way she's doing these scenes not great no there are other scenes in the movie where i'm like oh no you can act yeah. okay good yeah. i like you but here it is and uh this movie this is the early days have you noticed over maybe the last two or three movies we've done their scores are starting to go towards what we have always mocked as old yeah. horror movie music. Yeah. But this is the early days of uh theremin and yeah. and and synthesizer. I mean not really synthesizers, but but they are starting to lay on anytime something gets eerie, it's like Yeah. And they're doing this like she's like kind of like mummies? Did someone say mummies? And he's like, Yeah, what the hell is your problem? <laughs> yeah, it said mummies, come on. <laughs> Where'd that music come from? But it, it's so hokey to us now because that is become a trope. At the time, I'm sure people in the audience are like, damn, that's eerie sounding music. What is that about? And then she says, oh, I'm sorry. It's just something happens to me every time I think of Egypt. Because, you know, my family's originally from there. <laughs> All right, Amina, whatever. Uh, no, there's no scene where she, like, calls her Egyptian parents or anything like that. There's nothing <laughs> like that that happens here. We're not going to really dig into Egyptian heritage. Do you, do, you, do you know if we're perhaps related to an ancient princess by any oh, chance? Oh, now that you mention it, the curse. Honey, you didn't tell her about the curse? I never <laughs> got around to it. 
You some, think that someday I could be possessed by the spirit of an ancient, ancient Egyptian? Some parents dread having the sex talk with their kids. Her family, it's the curse talk. <laughs> oh, that was your responsibility. Oh. I, it's just so awkward. I couldn't do it, honey. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, I should have told her. <laughs> oh, well, she's going to be a mummy soon, I guess. Uh... I guess she'll end up moving to a small New England town that actually has the body of an ancient Egyptian <laughs> princess in its little museum. Yep. <laughs> Why is that? I had that thought too. Why is that here? Um, I mean, obviously uh, we could say that that's the banning that's banning's hometown. Yeah, I guess that's right. He is the guy who discovered it. So maybe he's like, Hey, government of Egypt, since I'm the discoverer, will you put this on indefinite, uh display here in my hometown in the scripps museum yeah so <laughs> so she says uh, i'm feeling very tired all of a sudden and yeah. he goes okay well you go home and get some rest but i'm still gonna hold you to that date later because i'm in a different movie this guy's just <laughs> in a like a college comedy yeah a college romantic comedy yeah. oh boy i hope we sure do win the big game against state <laughs> uh let's see so then uh then we just cut back to john carrot uh yusuf bay and uh and george zuko here uh still in mid conversation we cut away to the college and then came back to them it's an interesting choice because can i just say also oh yeah that is strange it's like wow how long did that talk between yeah. uh on the web and uh yusuf I, bay take i like the idea that they just <clears throat> stood there in silence for the next 20 minutes while all this played out and then comes back and they're like oh okay well you know we've uh, just discovered uh you know we had turan bay the actor mm -hmm. as the last guy taking over the job from uh yes and turan bay actually of the right ethnicity he was great we can, loved her can i just say that john carradine with some spray tan and dyed black hair is perhaps screen's least convincing egyptian and he's doing nothing to make you think he's egyptian he's nope. just john carradine as he always and is delivering the goofy stupid egyptian oh, chanting i pray to the god anubis Syrian. Yeah, that he <laughs> like, will shine a light upon thee. You know, like it's very. Amon Ra, Isis, Osiris. I'm thinking about doing Macbeth yeah. at the dinner theater this weekend. <laughs> I should be concentrated on Karis. I'm sorry, I'm very distracted. Doesn't anyone want to see my Othello? <laughs> I'm even darker than I am now. <laughs> Shoe polish is all I need to bring to life the tragic moor. There is Othello. no limits to the range of John Carradine. I gotta say, though, it is, he's a goof, but I love him too. Yeah. It is just about the high quasi-seriousness of him delivering all of his lines these like guys, that. These are always my favorite guys in these horror movies. Yeah. The same reason I love Vincent Price, right? They're just yes. like, these are guys who... Commit. They commit wholly. They know it's garbage what they're doing, but they're like, damn it, I'm a professional. They are endless sources of ham. Yeah. Like like, like a pork farm. Uh, they, Donald they Pleasance are... in the Halloween movies, I love oh, for the same reason. Oh, man. Man. Just elevating the, the dumb material with their, their great theatricality. Oh, yeah. These are guys who are slumming it hard. They should be doing much better quality of work, but they are bringing that level to everything they do and i i, I, yeah. I will say yusuf bay at least here in the beginning i buy that he's gonna do this job uh, that's, he is I kept, I, that's what was my exact thought i thought finally a competent priest yeah no man karnak i'm oh, sorry our cam <laughs> is uh it, it's in good hands yeah with yusuf yeah well bay. since the rebrand they've really i think got the thing on <laughs> lockdown uh we had to change all the stationery <laughs> Here's the letterhead. Your, here's your new business card, Yusef. Uh, you just crossed out Karnak in Sharpie and wrote in Arkham. Well, our funds are a little low. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we had to sell some of the tanner leaves. Oh, boy. Oh, the geez. youth of Egypt is using them as a recreational drug now. Um, so... so 
his mission we should stay well they've just received word from the great beyond that Karis lives which i love there's no explanation as to why Karis is alive again he just is he's still in the place we left him from the previous movie and somehow he's just just alive and he's just alive eating lots of twigs lots of berries so many and the mission there's, is there's a, there's, a, there's there's an actual noticeable like drought going on about why there's no more twigs and berries in this entire town and it just cuts wow this to has been a terrible uh, car is gone. i don't know anything about it <laughs> i just ran out of money for gum <laughs> uh the <laughs> the mission is that uh yusef is supposed to go back to new england yes lure Karis in and explain like dude we got to get you back to Egypt yeah. with Ananka's yeah. mummy. We, we need to get because that's where you you belong back Basically, here. Basically, everything has been out of sorts ever since Banning brought the mummies back to uh, uh, America. Weirdly, if Yusef Bey's mission had been successful, if mm-hmm. it had just been a smash and grab, get Ananka's corpse, get Karas, and head back to Egypt, no one would have had to have died. Oh, I had I mean, this. I had this thought right here when this is them like that's his mission. Just let him do it. That's fine. Just let him do it. Just let him grab both mummies, the one that's walking around and the one that's not. If anything, you're you're doing this boat. town a favor. Get this thing out of here. Get the Roddy <laughs> shambling corpse of Lon Chaney out of here. We are Mapleton, and it even says on our, you know, billboard, Welcome to Mapleton, home of the mummy. And then in parentheses an S, because there's two of them. <laughs> uh you expect us to give that up home uh, you, of the mummies you know it, 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 this is another point though in the movie's favor i think that that i looked favorably on it is that they actually did add in a complication that made that actually raised the stakes right and that is yeah. rare in these films it, it's true i actually went oh oh, oh okay yeah through so no I, fault of their own they have they have muddied the waters of this quest yeah uh so he's gotta he's gotta head to america uh, they do make a point of you have to brew the tana leaves during the cycle of the full moon. That actually is a holdover. They had introduced that oh, before. Oh, did they? I yeah, I... in that very first one, the full moon suddenly became like a thing. It's interesting, that... yet there's no real shots of a full moon in this movie, and they love to catch no. full moons in these films. So I think that's what... I will say me. that the the events of this could happen over three days. So this doesn't feel like, man, how many full moons are we dealing with? Right. This really is just like bing, bang, boom. <laughs> well, it's a 60 minute movie. It's 60 minutes and some change. I looked at, I think, I think the, the, the time code on my screen read 60 minutes, 23 seconds. Like it's, you got to get in and out of this thing. Oh, they could have spent a couple more time, uh, a couple more seconds on that, that, uh, the opening credits <laughs> making a nice 62 minute rounded off uh let's see so the uh uh we cut to professor norman in his study at home and he's looking at some kind of box yeah i don't i guess it's something from the banning expedition again and it it has info that they had been trying to get to the bottom of there has to be Uh, something here i will say this also and i'm giving the movie way too much credit the casting of his wife Mm-hmm. I like this lady and her grief. I, I liked their little relationship that we see in the scene. Yeah. They're a touching middle-aged couple, like an older couple. They're very sweet. So when he gets it, sorry, spoiler, and her <laughs> grief about losing her husband, I was like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was a momentary like, oh, I've, I'm feeling for this fictional lady. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, because she comes in and says, you need to come to bed. You can pick this up in the morning. And then she she says something about it being after nine or something like that, and that's when yeah. he's like nine. Why that's the key. Yeah, nine tana leaves. The one thing he couldn't decipher because he had mentioned uh, earlier was... in the classroom that nobody could figure out the exact mixture of tana leaves that made this work. Right. Now I have a lot of questions about tana leaves. Uh, okay. And, uh, uh, what do they you do should pose them now? Because one of our listeners could be an expert. Well, because I don't understand what they do to 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 Karis. They, well, they don't either. And they, they actually did the screenwriter's uh, jig uh, in the scene where they have the professor, who's the know-it-all, say, "Well, now I know how many." Still don't understand what the moon has to do well, with well, Tanalee or what. This could- 
they they make a point of saying it is his fuel, which is what I understood to be, except for he's shambling around no problem without yeah. it. And then once yeah. he gets it, he's in no better shape than he was before. I think it'd be interesting like to me, I would write it that his arm and leg don't work until he gets the tan like his body is shutting down as the tan. That's what they being... indicated in the very first one, in the mummy's hand. They indicated that yeah. if you went it's like, okay, yeah, here he is sort of dead and lifeless. Here's here's the juice of a few well, that, tan. That actually brought him back to life. Yeah. Right. Now he's back. But they also he also says like uh We'll give you more. You want that arm to work again, right? Yeah. We'll give you more and your arm will work. So they actually set that up and they've done nothing with no, it. No, because here he's guzzling, you know, nine tana leaves at a time and he's the same. He's the same. He's digging it. Maybe all it is is adding uh, more time to his ticker. Maybe there's some but sort of like. How long has uh, he been wandering around this New England town with no tana leaves? It's not like somebody has to bring him back. It's left over from the previous uh, Tana Leaf stuff. I guess so. But it's, it just it, this is John. Are we going to have this argument again? Because <laughs> off off mic, we do this all the time. Yeah, it's I know We're it's the arguing. Tana Leaf argument again. <laughs> Sorry if you guys are sick of it. Um, <laughs> no, we 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 can't answer this question because the screenwriters no, never answer there. It's, and it's inconsistent from movie to movie. I know. Absolutely. I know. They just don't care. Yeah. I just have to. Accept. And they don't think anyone will ever ask the question. Well, here we are now a- asking these are. questions. 2020. Yeah, that's right. And we demand answers. <laughs> We're stuck in our homes waiting on an answer. I really hope universal has been getting my letters. <laughs> Somewhere in your archive, surely there's an answer to this. Uh, they, they literally have a box. This says Mummy's Ghost. And <laughs> there's just three letters tossed in it. And they're from different decades. Huh, we got one from 2020. <laughs> Someone, Someone's asking Tana Leaf questions again. I just like that. They start getting a few. And it's like, uh-oh, the nut job's back. <laughs> we don't even know what this movie is he's talking about. Uh, did we make that? <laughs> Uh, so anyway, he he then just immediately is like a one, two, three, four, and he starts brewing up these tan leaves. Yeah, I don't know he's what totally he's like... hoping to achieve here, but what he does no. achieve is he gets the mummy sicked on him. The mummy's like, holy hell, is that what I think I smell? Yeah, Which we, I didn't mean we, rhyme. we get a number and... of shots of uh, LCJ in this movie. Good. Oh yeah. What? What is that aroma? No, obviously they were pouring a bottle of whiskey out uh, somewhere off screen, and that's what was actually causing him to do this. <laughs> that's that's the good stuff too, not the cheap shit I usually get at the stop and go. Oh man! I imagine you have to you have to make him act like a dog by waving the bottle, and so then he follows. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh man, LCJ, he is ready. For tan leaves or whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what he had to put in his head in order to understand the character, right? All right. Well, uh, oh, I see <laughs> if it's whiskey. Yeah, I get it. I get it. They say to uh, use your personal experience. Well, in my personal experience, it would be whiskey. I get yeah. it. I get it now. Shumbling, I, I, shambling around looking for drink. I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> if, if anything, I feel like he said this is his least favorite. Maybe it was too close to home, I think, is the problem. <laughs> I feel very uncomfortably uh, relatable. I'm relating to this character too much. Barely even have to act. Um, <laughs> I don't even have to move my legs much. Yeah, I mean, it did require very little physical exertion on his part to do this. Except uh, for the carrying. Um, and oh, even yeah. then, the carrying. That's got to be they, a stunt guy. Sometimes, yes. I mean, when he's going but down they, the ladder is what I was thinking. They actually made a harness oh, okay. that is part of the costume that helps hold her up that, because they would be doing this for hours. That well, that makes, makes sense. sense. I mean, that, that's, you know, look, as much as I want to slam him, that'd probably be true for anybody doing this. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be an uncomfortable lugging a full grown person around. And uncomfortable for her having to smell Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, oh, Jesus. I hope she had a stunt double too. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm sorry. But I Ramsey, will not be all, you have, that. Ramsey, all you have to do is lay there. It's like, yes, but do you realize how close I am to his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> so where are you from 
Are you really Egyptian? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this shot when he's when he's uh, stumbling towards the tana leaves, and he just he walks through this fence, but he has to do it like a few times. The fence doesn't come down easily around him. No, no, he has to batter that thing, and then he gets through it. Once again, just raw footage of Lon Chaney Jr. on the weekends there. <laughs> You're not keeping me from that old turkey. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, we put up a fence and we can't stop him. Uh, the the director tries here and there to do menacing and eerie stuff. He comes into the to Professor Norman's place and it's a whole thing of like the shadow falling over Professor Norman just looks up and goes, oh, yeah. and then he's strangled to death. Well, you have to do something because the sight of Karis isn't scary. The movement of Karis really? isn't scary. You, the only way, to, I mean, I applaud this guy for attempting any kind of filmmaking to make this character this mask, seem scary. This mask looks so bad. Yeah. And, and again, it's, uh, Jack Pierce cannot have, you know, been proud of this, but he just looks like, something that you would have gotten at Safeway in their Halloween aisle. Um, They just dusted it down to try to make it match up with the wrappings on the rest of his body. And even that doesn't look like it meshes. Not good. No, not good at all. So while he's stalking towards the professor's place, uh, Amina wakes up in her bed all of a sudden, like what? What? She wanders outside. And I do love on the nose, uh, a black cat just runs in front of her. I saw. I mean, I was like, "Come on, people!" They're like, eh, "This scene needs that's a little not, something more." Hey, throw that cat in there. That's exactly what it looked like. Some offhand person just did some some set dresser threw a cat in yeah. front of her. It reminded me and of it's Garth Rangi's Dark Place when you see the arms of the person come in with the cat. <laughs> oh, there are episodes of Garth Rangi's Dark Place that are scarier than this. Um, <laughs> Legitimately, yeah. But but yeah, that's just I mean, if it tied in at all, if it mm-hmm. if there was something about like cats are the harbingers of the the Egyptian gods or or some it, just this was just meant for them to like go yeah add generic spookiness. It's like why isn't she walking through a gigantic human sized spider web? <laughs> they should have that shit there. Why not? Isn't yeah. that eerie enough? Can't we just have a skeleton sitting on her porch when she walks up? Because, oh. So, Skeleton. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, Karis shows up at the professor's place, murders him, and then downs this tana leaf, which I thought was interesting because I, I, for a half a second when he started brewing this, I thought, oh, is this going to be a thing where then the mummy is indebted to him because he gave him the tana leaf, and then it's going to be John Carradine versus the professor for control That's of the mummy? That's too much thought. Yeah. That, that is way too much imagination <laughs> and thought. <laughs> Uh, I can only see it from a practical thing of Karis kills a person who has just made the thing he needs. Mm-hmm. And so he doesn't know that Yusef Bey is on his way. Right. I don't think the gods, the old gods are talking to Karis directly, perhaps. Uh, but it, it, it's just like, well, so why would you do that? Why wouldn't you like drink that stuff down and then like go more? You got more of this? Why would you kill this person? That's that's what I thought was interesting because I thought... Uh, I mean, because he doesn't kill Yusuf Bey when he gives him town leaves. No, no. Yusuf Bey just stands there going, yeah, Karis, I'm right here. I'm right here. I've been waiting for you. Yeah. All right. Don't worry about it. I just thought that I just thought that was strange. Uh, it is. But, but this is a horror movie. It needs a body count. And down goes. The I mean, prof. look, I, I suppose they should. For me, I've been complaining that these monsters don't kill enough people. So I guess I'm glad that, that they were taking people out from the start here. Yeah, he he kills a decent amount, and he kills a dog. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess it's implied he kills that dog. Oh, he kills that dog. (laughs) John, Uh, I'm sorry. I know they did not show it, but he fucking killed that dog. So he he comes out after having uh, murdered the professor, and Amina's there staring at him, and she pretty much immediately faints upon seeing him. And hopefully hits a paper mache rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we made the mistake again. Damn it. Who else can we I put will in this not movie? See another Aquanetta. <laughs> you, oh yeah, Get they, all the rocks out of my way. Well, they did. They did start. They did pass Aquanetta's law after that uh, about uh, the use <laughs> of uh, real and paper mache rocks in movies. 
Uh, yeah, so Amina passes out. Uh, she has that cool white streak in her hair. Yeah, which baffled me for a while, I guess, until uh, what was happening at the end of the movie. I'm like, okay, now I get it. Although that would have been but, a nicer buildup throughout the film if she had been noticing yeah. more mummy things happening on her. I don't understand where... Did she have it early? Like in the first scene in the library? Because I don't remember she did. She didn't. She didn't until after this. She wakes yeah, up, because she has the first later white when, streak. When Tom comes to see her after this, he's touching her hair like, what is this? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So she gets a second one later on. And yeah. It's like, okay. All right. They're indicating something. But it, once again, a better movie would have had even more of that. Like, oh, my hand's all wrinkled now. and well, Instead, it see, all then happens think... all at once. Well, I because I don't think she's actually possessed yet. The possession doesn't happen until uh, Ananka's mummy dissolves. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking uh, about do that, but that, that happens still pretty, at least halfway through the movies. So I'm saying in the second half, I want more build-up to mummy, not some white in the hair to mummy. Right. But, but I don't think this white in the hair has anything to do with Ananka yet. No, but we're talking, this is just what, trauma? Fright? Yeah, I guess was frightened but, but why is but she then drawn they, then they attach it to ananka later right what, what's weird is that that it, it seems as if this was a, a drawn out process of her becoming possessed because she's already having the weird like oh someone mentioned egypt oh someone mentioned the mummy before any of the stuff has kind of happened i'm like right. is she was she born to be set up to absorb the soul of well, Ananka or not? Yeah, because I, I, I thought this was going to be another thing like the Karloff movie where she's the right. reincarnation. I thought, okay, well, I see where this is going. No. Uh, I mean, I guess yeah, they didn't do what I expected. However, what they did do makes no sense. <laughs> so I guess they fooled me, but also they kind of cheated in fooling me. Uh, I, this is going to be, uh, a sideways, um, thing, uh, that our listeners might care about. We just mentioned, uh, a better mummy film and, uh, a better actress, Zita Johan. Oh. Um, and apparently one of her lost pre-code films, she only made like eight movies, uh, and not lost. It just has never gotten any kind of, it just got like a Blu-ray remastered release. And oh. I'm not saying it's a great film, but it's called The Sins of Nora Moran. Um, came out in 1933. Um, always had this very striking uh, poster. Uh, and I'd heard a lot about it, but apparently it is it was found in a good state, has been remastered and oh, released. Wow. So you guys out there who are uh, Zeta Johan fans, uh, which I count myself as one. Right, me too. Um, we love Zeta. Uh, and I like pre-code films just because it's so interesting to see where the art form was going before censorship came down and said uh, uh no and, and, um, and i always like that they're sort of like ooh, they're pre-code films and they're not that crazy i mean no s- it, some uh, no but they're nothing compared to what even normal against, yeah some would brush up against what we call r but to to a slight degree mainly just in subject matter like yeah. they were dealing with things like prostitution abortion uh, and right. socially conscious issues and that were uncomfortable. Place in some semblance of the real world. Uh. Yeah, exactly, and exactly, and and sometimes it'd be slightly saucy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but again, compared to lots of the kind of nudity of things. Yeah. Yes. But um, yeah, I like her a lot, Me and too. have since rediscovering the mummy. So I was excited to see that. I just found that out yesterday. So she's... I'll probably track that down and watch it. Yeah, I mean, she's amazing. Uh, she's great. Yeah. And also sounds like kind of a, a a badass lady in real life. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yay, ZD Johan. Yeah. Now let's go back to Ramsey Ames. Yeah. Anyway. Who's f- decent for this movie? Uh, yeah, she's fine. So, yeah, she we also see. Marrying, uh, she ended up marrying one of the playwrights of Man of La Mancha. Oh, the, interesting. One of the guys who wrote, and I love that musical. Yeah. Uh, good for Ramsey Ames. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, we also see after she faints that she has a tattoo on her hand or some kind of symbol on her hand. Uh, I guess she was always marked to end up being a nanka. Although this is the first we see of that, so I couldn't figure out, did this happen here? Is this a new thing oh. that just got on her? Like, yeah. has the mummy seen her and marked her? Oh, I don't know. I don't know either, because the movie doesn't have any interest in getting into this. I didn't see whether the that whether Karis was carrying a magic marker. <laughs> it's possible he did have a sharpie. Hang, hang on, let me he, just... Uh, there we go. It, 
<laughs> yep. That's You'll the be one. mine. I like her. She's my favorite. No, he's just bummed She's it's not so Evelyn good. Anchors. Um, <laughs> Who would be so convincing as an Egyptian American? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm from Egypt. Mm. Most patrician looking British looking lady. All right. Uh so yeah, the the I like Tom's in his dorm room or whatever, uh he, and and his forty five year old friend comes in and says, Oh, didn't you hear? Professor Norman was murdered and this your guy, girlfriend was there. They're both such bad actors. I think the the uh friend is even worse because He's he horrible. does walk in. He just walks in and is like going Professor Norman's been murdered. Uh, Amina was there. Yeah, She'd probably check. Probably I mean, check honestly, her. the friend might be the worst actor we've seen in these films. He's truly right. dreadful. I don't know that that uh, landlady in Phantom of the Opera still <laughs> to me is one of the worst. That's yeah. She was those, so, those two so stand bad. out as being actively like <clears throat> incapable of acting. Strangely, they ended up uh, doing. <laughs> I think dinner theater together, and I, I heard their waiting for Godot was really good, actually, surprisingly good. <laughs> Your barefoot in the park was stunning, <laughs> and that that play wasn't even written for another couple of decades. It was amazing. They were ahead anyway. of their time. Uh, uh, so he runs off. We see the 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 very convincingly distraught wife. Uh, going, mm -hmm. if only I told him not to stay up. I told if he'd only come to bed, he'd still be alive. I just remember him talking about leaves. He was doing something with leaves. Yeah, and, and what's the, the inspector guy? The sheriff is is pretty coldly saying stuff like, um, "Well, you know, clearly that girl we found passed out there. She couldn't have had anything to do with this, but we're still going to keep an eye on her. Oh yeah, she's not leaving town." She's not doing it. She's like, that's too much of a coincidence. Why was she out there on the lawn? Yeah, because he, uh, uh, she, she's being questioned by the sheriff. Tom shows up and he goes, well, I was with her tonight. We, we went out on a date. It's like, what time did that end? Oh, like 930. Well, this didn't happen until 11. So that helps in no way. Can I also say, here's a good indication. This is 1944. You're a college age guy mm -hmm. with your college age gal. Yeah. And your date ended at 930. Yeah, I don't see. Uh, the, I don't see the issue here, Brendan. What are you talking about? <laughs> I I got my arm around his shoulders and everything. Uh, a, a true gentleman wouldn't say that, but I I totally gave her a peck. She got a peck, all right. <laughs> and of course, penis <laughs> penis had to lick her face. <laughs> what was that now? Oh, my dog penis. Ah, oh, that's a strange. Okay. <laughs> she totally got kissed by penis. Did you say? Like the thing that you eat? Yeah, peanuts. Yeah. What are you getting? <laughs> I'm not. The film stops dead cold. I'm not. You do a bit about peanuts. I, I'm not hearing what I'm hearing, am I? <laughs> well, Ooh, after we boy. heard the way he pronounced the dog's name, we decided to write an entire scene where it was confused. <laughs> He's very well behaved. Who's that? Penis. Very well behaved. Anyway, uh, man, I'm it's it's so an Abbott and Costello bit that still would have been too dirty for the time, but it is that blue. kind of that, that kind of patter. Universal what didn't that? go that blue. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so Slowly she, I <laughs> she remembers she remembers going to bed and then being awoken by a cop out there. She remembers nothing about what happened in between. Uh, and then yeah, he the Tom notices the white streak in her hair, and then it cuts to headlines about the mummy's back. Yes, and another headline of like Egyptian girl questioned. Yeah. I was like, Jesus Christ, people! I heard an uh, Egyptian girl was questioned, so she's probably in league with that mummy. Probably in league with the mummy because she's Egyptian. Uh, Just like anytime you meet a Romanian, they're probably a vampire <laughs> or a vampire's familiar. And then we get that one of the headlines also says all able-bodied men are asked to join the patrol for the mummy. It's just so surreal that this is a known thing in this world. And this small New England town's like, wow, it's been a few years, but I am I got my gun. I'm ready to go money, well, mummy hunting. After we see that headline, we see these guys going, hey, what watch did you, Paul? Oh, I'm uh, 9 yeah. to 1030. Oh, that's interesting. I'm uh, 12 to 2. <laughs> They're like, yeah, well, just be careful. Just be careful. Yeah. Make sure that you lay out a, a trail of uh, tana leaves. You know he can't withstand that. He'll follow that anywhere. 
So yeah, that, that's it, by the way. That's that scene. And then it cuts away to other stuff. Can I just say that uh, trying to snare the mummy, uh, when it got to that, just because well, I'm old and I remember the comic books that used to have the hostess treats uh, uh, ads yeah, where you would have actual comic superheroes in a one-page ad for hostess Twinkies or whatever, and the way they would thwart the the villain in it would be to throw hostess cakes at them. Uh, and there was a, a one that I can actually re- still remember of Batman and Robin stopping a mummy by tossing some fruit pies at it. <laughs> and all the thing is, if this movie had had 45-year-old college guy and the inspector throwing a bunch of hostess fruit pies at LCJ, and uh, that's how they, they finally get Karis, I would have been very pleased. Me too. That would have been a great one. I, we'll talk about the way they attempt to ensnare the mummy, mm-hmm. and nothing comes of it. Nothing comes of it. This is one of the lamest build-up to, to, to payouts, because we have a whole town of men mm-hmm. ready to go to battle against the mummy, and not only do they never encounter him, they do a real bad job at the end when they don't know exactly where he's supposed to be, and then just slowly walk out and go, we didn't see him up there. At the end, I was just sitting there going, you fucking idiots. <laughs> I'm so, sorry. So, My neighbors complain because I'm very loud when I talk to Universal movies. <laughs> I do always think about if my neighbors hear you me and what their thoughts on, on the things I say in here. Uh, the yeah. weird, like, what what's he talking about? Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, we then cut to Yusuf praying to the gods and brewing Tannelies going, please guide Karas to me. Yeah, uh, and cars is sniffing the air for those sweet, sweet tana leaves. Here's the thing: once again, this town, like with uh, Turan Bay in the previous movie, you suddenly have an Egyptian fellow that no one knows, and he's mm-hmm. clearly Egyptian. Uh, <laughs> uh, has just moved to town. That fellow right looked like a time. very tan John Carradine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right around the time that Mummy starts killing people, an Egyptian person has just moved to town. Mm-hmm. And he's just in like the grassy hills above the town, aka Burbank, um, and brewing tannelies, which is what draws Karis. I, again, I can only think, why does why do the people of the town not? They can't find this person. No, they can't they're, figure out. They're, who... they're more concerned about the American girl of Egyptian descent who's yes, been living exactly. there for years. Yeah, <laughs> who passed out and got a white streak in her hair. Yeah, that sounds like trouble. It really, it really does. <laughs> uh, so uh, Tom and Amina, meanwhile, are on a romantic drive with Penis the dog, and uh, <laughs> the dog starts barking. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, this is after she says, "Boy, I've been feeling so great lately." Says, "I'm so glad you're no longer getting weird cold spells and fainting, yeah. and you know, feeling suddenly like, tired." Is and it then, just my imagination, or were you just laughing a little bit ago? It's been a long time since you've laughed. She's like, it's true. I'm happy again. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> it's true. I'm a manic little... depressive. Um, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, and then immediately she's like, what is that? I saw a shadow, and the dog was barking. He's like, oh, the dog barks at other dogs. It's a dog thing. Yep, it's a dog thing. And then uh, a local hunter... Yeah. The rifle comes out of the bushes and is like, it, oh, sorry to scare you two young lovers. I oh, happen to sorry to scare you. You had uh, your arm around her. Way to go, my friend. Yeah. Mm, that's third base. But it's 925. You should get going. <laughs> well, if the law will catch up with you. Uh, Date said it's 930. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the clock tower strikes it's like dates end dates end <laughs> get your ladies home uh <laughs> so uh yeah he comes out and he just goes well have a nice night oh actually the guy says uh i do like that tom has this line where he's like uh well uh yeah don't let us stop you from uh getting on your way if you know what i mean <laughs> Uh, I really didn't. Uh, I had to stop the movie and think about it for a long time. Still, I'm not 100% on what that meant. So the, the, the hunter goes back to his house where we now cut to, and, and this dog is barking like crazy. This is a different dog. It's not penis. A different dog. King is the name of this dog. King. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, the, this woman uh, sticks her head out the window of the house and says, King, quiet down. King, what are you doing? 
And of course, King is barking at the ever shambling uh, chorus. And then eventually <laughs> the starts like, <laughs> uh, eventually starts jumping at him and kind of attacking him. Uh, and he, he chorus kind of bats the dog away uh, and keeps going. Uh, but this is when the hunter comes home and he's like, Oh, King, what are you on about? Uh, and this is very, um, very modestly obscured as in they were really, we don't want people to get too scared at our horror movie mm -hmm. because both the dog and the, the farmer go into this barn. Yeah. And this is even, in some of these movies, we get a silhouette, a shadow of someone being killed in this Literally, people just go into the barn, and then you hear the dog yelp as if it's being hurt, mm -hmm. and and then the guy goes in, and then he he's obviously murdered. Well, you but hear some really, gunshots, which draw the attention gunshot. of the wife, who then comes running. Just out. A static shot of the outside of the barn, and you're yeah. like, "You're not going to give us anything, really?" Well, just like, your imagination is scarier imagine. than anything they can show, right? Mm -hmm. That's why the entirety of the film Alien. It's just the exterior of a spaceship and just sound effects. That's why I uh, still don't know what happened in that. Oh thing. my god! It's an alien! It's attacking <laughs> us! Oh my god! Something came out of his stomach, oh, and no. it's alive. I just thought of the most terrifying thing that could have been coming out of that guy's stomach. Whoo! <laughs> much scarier than anything they could show me. Yeah, I mean, I get it of the time period, but I'm like, come on, guys, step yeah. up your game. Yeah, it is. It is pretty lame. Uh, but also, Karis attacking anyone, even when we do see it, isn't particularly exciting or scary. It's always just a. I always had to. I always stop before I write down he kills someone on these movies because I'm like, well, that doesn't seem like enough to kill someone the way he just attacked him. But no, it always is a murder. But it's just like a, one a quick, this, quick, quick grab of the neck and he's dead. There, there, there's one scene in this movie where he cuts loose, but it's it's almost it's all against inanimate objects. Yeah, I want to see him do that to a person. <laughs> um, Actually, John have, Carradine gets it pretty good in this. That's that's true. I I have uh, tidbits about that scene when we get there. All right, we're we're coming up on it, I think. But uh, yeah. yeah, so then the the wife runs out and finds the dead hunter, uh, and she's very upset. Uh, and uh, so then we have. Yeah, this He's making a lot of uh, poor widows. Yeah, it's true. Uh, there's going to be nothing but women left in this town by the end of it. Um, <laughs> uh, so we then have the sheriff roll up. No, this is not the sheriff. I get confused here. We have the inspector. There were too many law enforcement characters in this That's movie. That's true. I got I got Because the sheriff confused. hadn't been... We hadn't spent a ton of time with him. So I just see somebody roll up and I go, oh, this must be the same guy. Uh, but it's the inspector who's going, oh, yeah, look at that. Mold on the neck. It's another mummy murder. It's another mummy murder. And there's a big hole in the side of the barn and mummy tracks going out from it. Yeah. yeah. But he's impossible to track down this guy. <laughs> I just want them to go, there's mummy tracks going out. Oh, wait, there he is. 240-pound, 6'3", uh, plumber wrapped uh... in, in uh, wrapping. He's impossible to find. I heard him mumbling something about how his career is better than his father's. I I don't know what that's about. I, I heard him calling out, Broderick! Broderick, where the hell are you? It's, it's, uh, it faced me, you bastard. I don't know. It's really weird. Um... Rematch! My trailer, five minutes! <laughs> uh, I just love the idea of makeup artists having to like cover up bruises and wounds they've uh, inflicted upon each other in those fights. <laughs> oh god you went to lon's trailer again didn't you like, don't worry about it I, I get to wear a suit in the next movie no one will see it and lon's covered head to toe in that mummy outfit yeah lon was fine uh well lon's face was a little rough looking to start with so let's be honest um, um so yeah let's see uh uh do the sheriff investigates yeah they know it's another mummy oh karis does find Yusuf, I wrote down, wrote that he drinks that sweet, sweet leaf juice. Oh, uh, and then, goat. and then he and Yusuf walk off together, and then it cuts to uh, oh, a museum tour of Ananka's tomb, and there's a guy explaining, oh yeah, they brought the tomb back. Uh, I'm giving this everyone a main up. accent here because it feels like that's what it should be, but no one actually has it. 
I know no one actually has it. And and accents is exactly in this scene, this guy, possibly European, possibly uh Middle Eastern is what he's going for. Mm-hmm. And it's not that the accent is bad. I'm just sitting there going, This is the Scripps College Museum. Mm-hmm. And where are they getting this guy? I mean, th- th- it would be a local oh, probably the, uh... teenager. It'd be, probably be some kid going, and here we have the mummy. Yeah, it's of the, the squeaky Nanka. voice teen from The Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. Squeaky um, I think and they so found it going, in Egypt. And they said the curse killed everyone associated with the discovery of the tomb. My new theory, this guy is a local community actor who they get to play the part of, you know. I think that's probably absolutely right. Or think about this. Maybe he's been there undercover as an advance man for the cult of Karnak. Sorry, Arkham. Oh, that would have been nice. Share a little glance with John Carradine. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, I've been looking after her. Don't worry. No one's getting close to the mummy of Ananka. And a couple have tried. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. They were taken care yeah. of. As in, I, I had their museum privileges to uh, yeah. cut off yeah, security cut. uh escorted him out <laughs> uh so yeah he's listening to this and then basically yusuf just hides behind something until the museum closes yeah and then it's like great my time to strike uh so we have this uh <laughs> yusuf's there in the dark making sure there's no one around meanwhile Kara shambles up to a delivery door at the back of the place uh, and we keep cutting to this old security guard with his pulp magazine and his He's creepy... listening to a, uh, yeah, like a mystery thriller radio that is, show. That is very on the nose of like, you will meet a murderer tonight. You yeah. will be killed tonight. And he's like, oh, oh boy. Yeah, he's just smirking like, I love this show. Yeah. This is my jam. Uh, he's lighting up uh, a pipe. I did like. He, I thought for a second, I'm like, he's gonna read the pulp magazine and listen to this very story based radio show. That's a thing I can't do. No, like if I'm no. reading something, I can have music on. Yeah, but I can't have another narrative. I've tried no. reading and having a podcast going on at the same time. I'm like, no, it's uh, this no. Is too. You can't do yeah, that. You're shit. not getting either one. But this guy is totally down for that. I hate when it's. These are people who should know better. This is Universal Pictures making this, and they have a, a radio show in their movie, mm-hmm. and it doesn't sound like it's coming through the radio. Not at all. I'm like, I mean, it doesn't have to be over the top, crackly and staticky, but a come on, bit. you know what it sounds like. You have radios at home, 1944, <laughs> and I guarantee you it doesn't sound that clear. <laughs> Somebody in the audience is like, where did you get that radio? It's so clear. <laughs> Man, I'd give my laugh nut for a radio that sounded like that, <laughs> but not my peanuts. No, was that peanuts or penis? Oh, if you have to ask, look to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it turns oh, into a circle on his face. That, ladies and gentlemen, again, we're better than this. It's just that this is what the mummy's ghost has driven us this to. This is the content you get when we watch movies like this. <laughs> This is what you paid an extra five bucks to hear. Yeah, yeah, this is it. This is the good stuff. Uh, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff too hot for the regular show. <laughs> this is panel up after dark. There we go. Uh, so, uh, da, 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 yeah. So then, uh, Karis is in the museum now, and uh, Yusuf is like, "Well, there she is. Your great love." And uh, uh, Karis touches her shoulder, and suddenly and he dry. Yeah. he's like, Bleh. "She looked a lot better." <laughs> no, that was just lawn after breakfast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. Mm. Did we take it again? No. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I thought whiskey and cornflakes would have would have sat better. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, <laughs> My huevos rancheros coming up let me say they had to i think they had to separate the costume uh, into two pieces uh, from a bodysuit because lon had a few emergencies <laughs> while wearing the full bodysuit i do not doubt it he just said he he would itch but couldn't scratch yeah yeah uh so he uh uh the, the 
at the moment he touches the body, uh, Amina wakes up and touches her shoulder where he, as if she's been touched in the same place. Thereby, oh. you know, very cleverly using film language to connect us uh, to connect these two things together. And then immediately, uh, I, I did respect the fact that they did not feel the need to put dialogue in where she goes, "I feel as if I was just touched on the shoulder." <laughs> She'll say it later, though. Um, uh, that's true. Uh, and then immediately the body just disappears, leaving only the wrappings of the mummy. And even body Yusuf Bey is like, I don't know what to tell you. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> I, I do like that. This is his big mission, and he's acting on beh behest of the gods. And then he's like going, well, damn. <laughs> well, I, I do. Yeah. It should, I, wow. Shouldn't George uh, Zuku have known that this could happen and, and it could transfer into the, another body? He warned Cars, him in no way me. about this. Look at me. I had no idea that was about to happen. Well, Karis doesn't take it out on John Carradine. No, no. He takes it out on this museum. He does. Starts Fucking wrecking stuff. Loses his shit. Yeah, he's he's not happy. When he smashes the glass, by the way, he actually did get cut. That sounds about right. And you, you see him bleed on camera. He's bleeding from the hand. And that's his real blood. <laughs> Whoa, that is badass. No, that is so badass. No, no, that was actually, that was prop glass. I think that's just a wound from his fight club opened, <laughs> opened up. That was some of his extracurricular that's the fighting. That's it always fascinates me. I mean, these movies didn't give a shit about saving. I mean, look at what happened to, uh, you know, uh, Aquanetta. Uh, I know. The, you know, because it, it, it's so interesting now. It, you do anything with even you definitively fake glass and there's so many warnings procedures people around you know uh yeah. and uh here they're just like whatever whatever look you, you know see, what to hit when people when actors roll through fire in these movies we've talked about it's just like good lord i mean now i've i've heard literally like if you just trip in a scene they have a stunt advisor a medical team they're already asking if you want to use a stunt double you know it's just like do you need knee pads do you need a back brace do you need every you know it's because it took time for Hollywood to be, uh, I wouldn't say shamed, but lawsuited into this kind of responsibility. Or they're like, you know what? Maybe we should look after our actors. Yeah, I mean, when a, after a few of them are killed, that's usually the indication of maybe we should, uh, you know, <laughs> look into some safety stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's see, the body. Uh, uh, yeah, and then he does say, oh, no, wait, John Carradine does just go, her soul has entered another form. Oh, so he yeah. did know that, I guess. But but it seems like, again, he didn't plan on it. He's yeah. like going, oh, you know what probably happened? Yeah, yeah, I should have seen and this. And it seemed to happen when Karis touched her. So if Karis hadn't touched her, would this have all been fine if, if, if Yusuf Bey had just pulled know. her out of there? What I thought was funny is, does this mean that maybe Ananka does not want to get back with her old love? And she's like going, <laughs> oh, no, fuck this shit. We actually I did want... not end things on good terms. <laughs> I, uh, he, let's just say it was sort of one-sided. Yeah. He liked me a lot. I, not so much. That makes sense with uh, LCJ playing him. I will say that. It really does. So she's like going, plan B, plan B, move the soul into a hot young body. Uh, so the old security guard then enters with a gun already drawn. He's got a he's got a gun on uh, on John Carradine, uh, and Karis gets in the way, of course. And this guy shoots at Karis a bunch of times, does nothing. Classic. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's dead pretty quick here. Yeah. Uh, and then immediately, uh, Amina. There's this caretaker woman, I guess, who's in charge of the women's dormitory or something. At, yeah. uh, and she's comforting Amina, who the hero says, she says, it felt as if someone reached out and touched my shoulder. And the matron lady's like, well, that's nice. No one's touched me for years. <laughs> oh, wow. like, she goes, humble brag. <laughs> humble brag, Amina. What did we say about that? I wish I could get that kind of action. <laughs> Look to camera. <laughs> uh we are i think supplying the comedy that this movie uh yeah. chose perhaps wisely to eschew well but because it's still it in there been, uh, it would have been very clunky yeah if they had tried to liven this movie up with a little bit of ha ha <laughs> yeah I, I i do think that those are the most embarrassing moments in these movies to me are when they're trying to be funny 
Yeah. Uh, all that, all the dart shenanigans in that Invisible Man movie last week. Jesus. Oof, boy. Uh, so we then have Tom talking to the sheriff saying, hey, listen, sheriff, I know you said that Amina has to stay in town because she's maybe a person of interest in a murder, but like... But I want to take her out. I want to take her on a little trip. Like, she's not doing well. All right. Uh, right. She's really cracking. Almost as if she's, like, guilty about something. I don't know. Uh, like, it's just like he keeps... He's digging her grave here. I know. Uh, she had nothing to do with it. And of like, Of course... She seems to not be herself, and she's close to having a mental breakdown, but clearly she's innocent. Yeah. And, and anyway, we should skip town, right? That'd be cool, yeah. right? Uh, and he said, uh, yeah, no can do there, pal. Uh, and uh, so that's the end of that scene. As Meanwhile, the cops are now at the museum uh, at this crime scene. And, and once again, uh, confirmed mummy killings got uh, strangulation and mold. No fiend killing this time. It is refreshing that uh, that in this world they're like, oh no, this is clearly the mummy. Well, especially getting, in a sixty-minute movie, that, you know, yeah, we don't. I don't want twenty minutes where they're wondering whether or not it's the mummy or somebody's not believing. Right. Just get right to it. We know it's the mummy. You don't have the time. Every man in town has been wandering the streets after dark with the rifle, and they can't spot this guy. <laughs> He's too good. He's too good. And no one thought to, uh, you know, have extra people around the museum where there was another mummy. No. He wouldn't. He wouldn't be interested in that. No. <laughs> Not with all those twigs and berries he's been eating. And so this is when the museum curator pops into this movie. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a, weird. A guy whose name is Dr. Ayad? 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 Something. Uh, something like that. Lester Sharp plays him. It's just that basically Professor Norman got killed off fairly early. Yeah. And now we need another Egyptian expert person. Yeah, which I thought, why kill Dr. Norman? <laughs> well, yeah, or... Or introduce this guy early on. Yeah. Like, he's a guest speaker for Professor it's, Norman's it's class. It's the same issue I have with the sheriff and the inspector. Like, yeah. you know, you, you need solid law enforcement and doctor expert Either character. You consolidate them into one character, or you make sure they've always been there, so at least they're in the back of the audience's yeah. mind. This sort of introducing of a character out of thin air late into the story, you're like, what good is this? It'd be like Van Helsing gets taken out 20 minutes into Dracula, and at the end it's like, by the way, I'm Dr. Kabuku, and I'm also a, a vampire expert, and I'm just going to help you finally kill I the guy. I love the Adventures of Kabuku series. That was a great, it, you know it, what? I mean, I it, think that's it, underrated, really. It, and in the public domain, domain now, so you can do your own Dr. Yeah, Kabuku. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear they're doing yeah, a new comic vampire, series about him. Uh, Dr. Kabuku. Yeah. Isn't Dynamite doing Dr. Kabuku? No. Uh... <laughs> So God uh, bless you. they uh, they have the museum curator come out and go, uh, hey, can you translate these hieroglyphics in this tomb? Now, I, look, I don't know much about hieroglyphics, so this may be a dumb statement on my part, but are hieroglyphics translated into direct full sentences? They're images that represent things. But the idea that he is like, here lies because of this, like there's a hieroglyphic for the word because? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it works, but I do know that hieroglyphics have been translated into passages. Yeah, so maybe some of the linking stuff they have to they do for surmise. context. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it, you can get dates and and times and specific things that happen, not just like here's a a pictographic representation of of themes and they're like no this is an actual language has letters and words so yeah i'm just but I'm, just like in the moment he's going well uh, number one haven't they already examined they act like they've never looked at what was in there that was the bigger problem i had is that can can you look at these and read them that guy's been in that museum like he would have the stuff memorized he's he's had that thing for months years you're telling me he's like, well, I never thought to do it before, but let me see. Here lies the do do do, and yep, that's what it says. The only thing that should be new to his eyes, and probably not even then, is that box that talks about the Tantalus thing, because he then becomes expert number two or three now to figure out nine Tantalus. That's what the mummy's after. 
nine. And Professor Norman figured it out. It was nine. Dude, if you boiled up six Tannelees, you still would have Kara sniffing around going, <laughs> someone uh, someone making Tana? Ooh, just like mom used to make. Uh, Rumor has it there's some Tana on the on the grill. You got uh, <laughs> some Tana a boil. <laughs> Is that a mummy over there licking his lips? I don't... Uh, oh, <laughs> just you, uh... at the window, I'm like, uh, uh, Tana. I mean, look so good. The it's way so he downs the tan every time he gets a hold of it is just like, I like that. Ugh, 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 ugh. He definitely is sort of the addict, like going, "Oh, sweet Tana." Once again, Lon goes, "I know about this." Uh, Trust me, I can play this. So and th- this sleep. also says here in the hieroglyphics that her body, you know, her soul, can enter other bodies because they mention there's no way they stole just the body because you'd have to tear apart the wrappings to do that. Right, the and, wrappings are whole; they're right. just empty. Right. Uh, and then I wrote down my favorite line in the movie, which is one of the cops saying, I don't know. Sounds like a lot of applesauce to me. Yes. <laughs> was this a commonly used expression? It was. Was it? Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, that, that's, I feel like that's obscure even when I watch these. I've never heard that even these old movies. I, I've heard it a lot. I think it's actually much more common to 1930s. Maybe they're indicating this guy's using an older expression. But applesauce is like, Ah, it's bananas. Anything that's like ludicrous is applesauce or bananas or banana oil. Oh, don't hand me that banana oil. That goes even farther back to the twenties. Yeah. Um, but yeah, applesauce. Ah, don't hand me that applesauce. Well, anyway, this sounds like a bunch of applesauce to this guy. But of course, <laughs> once again, they just they need somebody in here to say that. But then immediately, that guy is just wrong and ignored because we are hunting a mummy and we are right about everything <laughs> and we're just moving along. Uh, you know, I may be looking right at it, but I deny it. Yeah, that's a bunch of applesauce. So they, uh, the 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 inspector here takes the curator back to Professor Norman's house, where yeah. they have tana leaves for them to brew up. And this yep. is the plan. The inspector says, "Here's the plan. What we're gonna do is brew up these tana leaves, lure this guy here, and then we're gonna dig a big pit that he'll fall in." Here's the thing. Okay, I kind of appreciate it on the one hand and really hate it on the other what i appreciate on the one hand is here we see not non-believers this is the the these are the law enforcement officers know they're up against a supernatural being they figured out what the lure is they have a plan and i respect that as far as like wow that's kind of new to these movies is they're like going look it may be seem like applesauce but this is our plan for dealing with it so and it's very boring at this point this has been a lot of scenes of 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 them talking and there will be even more scenes as they dig the pit and you're going can we get back to the mummy please but the thing that pisses me off is the plan doesn't doesn't happen it doesn't it doesn't come off i respect that as a ballsy thing of like we just showed you for half the runtime of this movie (laughs) it's exaggeration the setup of this plan only to have the plan not actually occur and I was like, that's so stupid. That makes me so angry. Yeah, it is just like I kept waiting for either Karis or someone to fall in the pit. Well, someone almost does. Yeah, and but then, then she go, doesn't. Oh, and I thought, pit. yeah, careful of the pit. And then the pit never comes back and the climax doesn't even happen around the pit. Oh, and we spend minutes of them discussing the plan digging the pit and then we see people putting leaves over it to camouflage the pit and they th- there's screen time given to this plan that is all for stupid not yep so we then cut to tom who's talking to amina who's real haunted here she says she actually says i feel haunted yeah uh because she literally is haunted she's a haunted yeah. person she's uh, got another soul in her body you and know what I mean? tom says hey you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take you to see my people in new york uh, this was weird. And then he goes, oh, yeah. She says, well, how do you know my your people will accept me? And he says, oh, I've already talked to them. They've put out all the wedding jewelry. And I did think, I mean, this is creepy on Tom's part, by the way. She goes, wait, wait, what, we're, we're going to get married? He goes, well, yeah, don't you love me? This, this, all, this all this is weird, as in the, fuck, the, the man. Wedding, but also my people. Talk about a phrase that I don't, I, it may have been of its time. Yeah. But I was like, who is he talking about? And yeah. then later he does say it's his family. Yeah. Obviously, when he talks about 
wedding jewelry. It's the but Czechs. He can... It's the Czechs. He's from Czechoslovakia. She at one point says, but your family, do you think they would accept me? She says family. Yeah. But he's like, going, my people are great. My people. I'm like, who are your people, man? Yeah. You're creeping me out a little bit. You'll be one of us, Amina. Mm-hmm. One of my people. Yeah. We prepared the way for you. Oh, man. And laid out the wedding jewelry. Here's a better turn. Tom belongs to a different sect of the Egyptian thing. And it's a warring thing, and they want to control her to destroy Karis. We have created a better film. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I think, go back to the beginning of this episode, everybody. If you piece together, like, the five suggestions we've made throughout this thing, there's a better movie in here. Get to work. <laughs> We're not going to do it. We've given no. you all the pieces. You write the movie. Uh, Steven Summers is out. He's not going to be making another one. And, and uh, they've given up on the Dark Universe. Now's the time for you to take our discarded ideas and fragments and turn it into a badass mummy movie. Once again, I think the answer to Universal's problems is you remake the mummy's ghost specifically. Yes. There's nothing quite like seeing a 3,000-year-old mummified Lon Chaney Jr. stumbling around the back lot that looks like Midwestern U, uh, New England. Uh-huh. What? Uh what? The idea of a mummy, an Egyptian mummy, loose in a modern day setting should be awesome. Yeah. But it, it, it there are parts of this where I'm like going, it I was a tour guide at Warner Brothers. I know exactly what that back lot is right there. <laughs> I was like, I, I've been to Universal. I know where they shot this. These cheesy little neighborhood towns. It's like leave it to Beaver and the mummies walk around through their backyard. <laughs> I just want the mummy to be like, oh hey Wally. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, mommy. hey did, did the milkman come by? Did he leave any Tana extract? <laughs> you know, sure well, and then, then Ward has a whole thing about, you know, boys, just because he's a mummy doesn't mean he's different than us. He still has the <laughs> oh, I never thought about it like that, Dad. <laughs> you know, he's not a stranger. He's a friend. <laughs> if he decides he wants to come in and strangle your mother, by all means, let him in the door. <laughs> We learned an important lesson today about tolerance. Yeah. And that's our story tonight on Leave It to Beaver. Good night. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Oh, so he, uh, Tom then leaves Penis the dog with uh, Amina. To, oh, he'll, he'll be protection for you. He'll bark at anything and let you know. Uh, and I, did, I am starting to go, oh, my God, is this another hero dog? Yeah, I well, I clearly, I was like, when they're setting this up for another hero dog, I was like, will the dog win the day? Uh, my question, not, not to the extent dog, that the previous dog did. Yeah, I, I was like, is he? I know it's a, a cliche, but will he grab the wrappings and unwrap Karis? I was waiting for that. I was like, oh, that'd be awesome, but that, that would require way too much makeup work on their part. It's true. Uh, it would take until Monster Squad before we got a very satisfying mummy being unraveled to mm-hmm. the point of dust skeleton i mean i'll say it i'll say it here as i've said many times just go watch the monster squad it's great yeah and we'll be talking about it no doubt next week again <laughs> when we have the big monster rally mm-hmm. out of France. yeah actually monster squad is one of the better monster rally movies in existence it's true it's true uh so he leaves the dog uh what was this i'm, I'm oh, oh yusuf prays to the gods to be like yusuf turns to the gods to be like Hey, can you can you guys help me find Ananka? Hey, I've kind of screwed up here. Um, Amon Ra, Osiris, Isis. You think you guys could help me out? And by the way, I had no idea that Princess Ananka would be so hot when she's resurrected. <laughs> yum I've yum. Serious problems dealing mm. with that. Mm. <laughs> uh, he still hasn't gotten there because he hasn't gotten a look at her. Instead, light right. hits the 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 pendant that's on his uh, that's around his neck, and he's like, "That's the answer, Chorus." Look for this light and this symbol, and that's the girl we're looking for. Uh, and Karis goes out. He shambles out to find his love. He sure does. Whole lot of shambling going on. So they start brewing up the nine tana leaves to lure him in. Uh, we see Karis sniff in the air, but he's he's not fully distracted at this point because he's, he's so determined to find Ananka. Yeah. Uh, He's like, I bet there's a pit there anyway. <laughs> I can sense a pit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Amina wakes up. She walks outside uh, and immediately faints <laughs> upon seeing Karis. It's very helpful. She didn't. She made sure he didn't have to break into a house or go through a window. She goes out to meet him. 
like an Uber driver mm-hmm. and then passes out and then he lifts her because you apparently that one dead arm will come back to life anytime there's a woman that needs carrying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, lady, huh? Let me just get that arm oh, warmed up. It's just up against his chest. It's withered and useless. And then it's like, should I, I, I now have to because I have to lift a woman. Come on, And that arm pops out. I was like, there you go. Let's get going, arm. Let's get going. This is for, <laughs> this is for the stuff we like. This gets us the lady. Come on. Uh, so she faints. He picks her up and carries her off. And then the dog starts barking to alert everyone that a mummy has kidnapped Amina. Yeah, if only that dog could actually speak. And the car- I, I'm constantly like, what is it, penis? <laughs> is there trouble, penis? <laughs> Does it have something to do with Amina? Can you show us where Amina is, penis? Penis. <laughs> hey, everybody, just follow penis. He knows where he's going. What's that, penis? There's trouble at the old mill. Um, we're gonna get trouble at the old <laughs> mill at this movie. <laughs> Uh, it's not a mill. It, it's another cool what? shoot. Yeah, uh, and I think we've seen it before. It's not the same one. It I, looks I, like I, damn similar. It it might be a reconfigured. I think that thing was modular, and they probably did use the track. I feel like, if not in one of these movies, I've seen this in some movie before. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it's shorter, I think, than the one we saw in Invisible. Yeah, it Man. is, it is. But, I, but th- this is this is a stock universal thing. Yes, yeah, I think so. So, uh, yeah, he gets he gets her, and he heads for the hills where there is a coal chute. Yeah. But- Meanwhile, we cut back to the cops now, confirming that they've dug yeah. said pit once again. Me thinking this is a setup for something because they're going, right. oh, we finished digging the pit. Well, how deep did you dig it? We dug ten feet down. Wow, that's going to be perfect. Yeah, they're standing there and they're like going. You can make sure you camouflage that really good because you got a guy throwing leaves on top of it. And you're like, okay, great. Are we going to do anything with this thing? No. Well, the sheriff says he wants to send all the men out into the woods to look for it, to look for the mummy. And the inspector says, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what we should do? He's probably coming here for the tana leaves. Let's just yeah. have everybody wait here for him. We'll wait here and don't stop him. Let him come forward. That's the whole thing is we'll draw him in so then with we- the st- these delicious tannelies we see car is carrying amina to the coal chute the dog is in pursuit penis the dog is in pursuit penis is is on it yeah and uh the <laughs> the caretaker terrier too this is this is not like that big german shepherd we just dealt with this is a little terrier a cute dog penis yeah uh, um and is very heroically not going to give up on amina he does a more a better job at protecting her, i'd say than the man who would introduce her to his people. Well, Tom is asleep at home when he gets a phone call from the caretaker at the women's dormitory going, Another mommy, it took Amina, it took her, it's got her. And he's like, what? Oh, oh, okay, well, I'll put my shoes on. Tom is a useless, useless hero. He is so... Oh, I I object to even calling him a hero of any sort. Uh, He's a man in this movie. (laughs) He is a useless man in this movie. So it's hard for me to grieve. And then, so meanwhile, the caretaker then runs to the house where all the sheriffs and cops and everybody are. And she's like, the mommy, he's got a mean, and he went that way. The mommy got a mean, and they're like, no, no, don't, don't run any closer. There's a pit. There's a big pit right there. Don't fall in. Nobody's oh, going to fall in. How awesome would it have been if the payoff would have been that this caretaker lady does go into that the would, pit? That would have been something. And they would have been like, oh, my God. <laughs> Our big plan <laughs> thwarted. I don't know. It's a big pit. We could fit somebody else down there. Let's let's not call this off just yet. Well, uh, they do call it off, and they 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 immediately they, now chase after the mummy because the caretaker says he went that away. Somehow, by the way, the mummy's never drawn to the tan leaves of this place. The mummy somehow skirts past this place. Mm-hmm. Great, great police work. Uh, Plus, also he's slow to begin with. He's slower with a woman in his arms. Mm -hmm. I do not understand how that it takes so long for people to catch up. Tom is the the quickest. He's following peanuts. Penis. Peanuts. Tom always follows penis when he hears penis barking. Um, So he gets there first, and then the the townspeople are quick on his heels. Yeah, so he's chasing after 
Karis. And Karis, meanwhile, has brought Amina to the the top of the coal chute where Yusuf is waiting. And he he it, gets a good look at her. Yeah, he get and he's like, oh boy, something's stirring in old Yusuf. Mm. Uh, and- well, this deserves not only one John Carradine monologue, but two. <laughs> Would you like, audience, I'm just going to ask you directly. Would you like to hear my inner thoughts? <laughs> the audience goes, no, thanks. Oh, of course you do. Finally, the only actor worthy of sharing the screen with John Carradine. The voice John of John Carradine. Carradine. I couldn't believe this. This is such a trope. And I, 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 is there a movie I like hearing someone's inner thoughts in? No. Uh, if I'm reading a comic, I get pissed off at thought balloons. Yeah, me too. Come on, people. They've, and they've pretty much gone out of comics. It's pretty rare to get yeah, a thought balloon. Yeah, they're kind of coming back in a, in a, they're like, hey, let's stop using the, those narrative boxes, which are essentially just thought balloons without the balloon. Yeah, but I always like those better because that's like voiceover. That's fine. Yeah, but this is hokey as shit. That's the scene we're at, right, John? Yeah, I'm not yeah. skipping. Oh no, no, yeah, because he, he, he's he's tying her up to ship her back to Egypt. Basically, is what he's doing here. Because yeah. he says, like, back home we go now. But then you hear his <laughs> John Carradine is is actually, ever creeping towards Dudley Do Right. I'm realizing uh, it's it's easy to do, <laughs> uh, but it, he starts going. She's so lovely. I didn't anticipate how lovely she would be, and and why should Karis? Get to touch this pretty lady when I, Yusuf Bey, could touch her. And I'm not like, a well, weird shambling corpse. I could yeah. please this woman. In yeah, fact, like, you know if what with what the tanner leaves, if I drink them and she drinks them, well, yeah, well no, he says, if you give her no. the tanner leaves, she'll be young and beautiful forever. Ooh. Don't tell Karis that I'm planning this, but I'm so going to go behind his back. Yeah. And so he starts to move the tan leaves to get her. And she comes too, and she's like, who are you? What are you doing? He's like, shut up. We're going to be together forever. You'll be young, and we'll, we'll live forever together. You understand me? Uh, Karis is literally three feet away going, hey, hey. I think something's going on. I'm not entirely sure because oh, I'm addled God. with tan leaf juice, uh, but seems like he's horning in on my action still coming down from the tan leaves and uh, killing all the dogs and old men oh boy <laughs> that gets the so, old dead heart a pumping so uh karis isn't pleased with yusuf bay nope uh and then and then of course i like yusuf bay being like no no i was trying to prepare her for you uh, it was it's what i was so doing hilarious. <laughs> I didn't know my innermost thoughts were audible. <laughs> oh, did I? That you did, actually could hear my innermost thoughts. Did I say the inside part out loud? Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> exactly it. So, uh, Karis is strangling him, um, pushing him out this window of the coal chute, yeah. while Tom, the non hero, is down on the ground going, oh. <laughs> and he sees. We see the dummy of John Carradine. The most horrifying thing in this movie is a bad dummy yeah. being tossed from the window. Yeah. Uh, it's the best death in the film. Uh. <laughs> it is. There's a. I thought they would at least put in a, ah, they didn't. No, I would have loved that. Ah. There's just a dummy toss and it hits the ground. Do you think and, they then, were, and, and unfortunately, we lose the film's best actor, John Carradine. Uh, yeah. Sure. Do, you, do you think there's any part of him that got to this part in the script and he was like, oh, good, a soliloquy? <laughs> I think so. He's like going, I'm going to tear the shit out of this. Oh, yes. <laughs> now he's, he's turning like, to Robin Williams, in my impression. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> Once again, these are all fine lines for the Carradine impression. It is easy Very to true. turn into Robin Williams. Uh, I think he's sitting there going, this is all gibberish. And then he gets to the scene and the script. He's looking at it and goes, here's dinner. <laughs> all of those little appetizers mm. now it's worth it yes uh, i thought it was hilarious that tom who you think is most concerned about his fiance mm-hmm. would be fiance well, yeah he with the woman he's convinced is his fiance oh, and he knows the mummy's up there and he just saw the mummy toss a person he doesn't know out the window mm-hmm. tom runs to dead yusef bay to check on him and make sure he's okay as in he's dead yeah so that little shot of him like going and checking the body, I was like going, well, that's time well spent. You certainly don't want to run up the stairs of the coal chute to see if maybe Amina's all right. No, 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 no. We got to make sure this stranger is okay. 
Jeez. Uh, and uh, he runs he deserves everything he gets, Tom. He's a he fucking runs idiot. up the coal chute just as Karis is coming out. Uh, he throws one punch and then is immediately knocked unconscious by Karis. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he basically rolls down to the ground. Yep. Uh, so that the and I thought for a second, I'm like, is he dead? I would love it if kinda, he was just dead. I I was kind of ready for that. Yeah. But the townspeople find him unconscious at the bottom of the coal chute Mm -hmm. and they check on him he wakes up and goes amina's up there with the mummy so all of the cops rush all the the big group this is just as karis has snuck out the back let's say that there's 12 of these villagers yeah (laughs) there's 12 men there um four or maybe three of them including the inspector actually go up the coal chute to see what's going on mm-hmm. and they don't really rush up there they they go up mm-hmm. leaving eight of them down on the ground just still standing over tom to make sure he's okay yeah i'm like what needs more manpower the guy who's laying there and isn't the mummy or maybe a mummy i don't know he took a pretty bad spill <laughs> it's true so anyway the four of them go up there and we've yeah. already seen Karis lifting uh, poor, poor lady doesn't have to walk again for the rest of the movie. Nope. Lifting Amina, and he he takes her down this the the ladder yeah. that they can't quite see from where they're at. So he has yeah. escaped through the only one other passage in this little room at the top of the mm-hmm. coal chute. Mm-hmm. So that makes the next part of the scene infuriating to me because the cops go up there and they look around. They go, no, huh? No one up here. Not up here. And then they walk fairly slowly back down and they go to Tom. No sign of it. Yeah, she was she wasn't up there. And it's not a thing of like, wait, there's some stairs here. And there's nothing of them going like, well then he's probably gotten out and running down and circling around to find out where he goes. There's no scene of police finding Carradine's body either, where they're like, Wait, he killed this guy. (laughs) There's no urgency here to the point where it's like And there's been so much urgency up to this point. Yeah, they go back down to Tom. Well, we couldn't find him. And then Tom's like, but I still hear penis. Yeah. You hear that? Penis is still barking. <laughs> so poor concussed Tom, who's an idiot and I doesn't deserve our sympathy, he gets up to chase after the barking dog. Mm-hmm. And here's where the movie starts to get grimly interesting. Yeah. Right at, right at the end. Well, because they, they eventually, shockingly, somehow managed to catch up with guys. <laughs> As he's carrying Amina. But we keep cutting to these shots of Amina's hand and suddenly it turns wrinkled. And Amina's foot yeah. it turns wrinkled and we get a we get a theremin woo kind of sting on yeah. it. Amina's hair also up in the coal shoot. Oh, it's had fully now white. Totally white. Yeah. Which I, I did I, which up until this moment when this happened, I thought, what the hell is going on with her hair? Yeah. I didn't but realize I was down for it. what I, I don't got, know. That's a kink for me. Because I didn't understand. I I, I I was like, so it's she possesses the body of another person, but that body then turns into a wrinkled mummy. Maybe that's kind of odd. Maybe Ananka didn't quite know how this was going to work either. Or does she need uh, a tan leaves? She never gets any tan leaves. That's right. She never gets any tan leaves. Maybe it was a thing of like, once you're reincarnated, make sure you get some of that sweet, sweet tan leaf, yeah. and you'll be okay. Well, the problem is, old. Uh... LCJ there guzzled it all down. He, he was greedy for that shit. Oh, so he has, her, lug, lug. he has her in his arms. Yeah. He's walking into this is what I think is hilarious. This is a New England town. Yeah. Maybe Massachusetts. I don't know. That has hills that look like Burbank. Mm-hmm. That has a coal chute. Okay. I guess, yes, it's coal mining in New England, of course. In fact, I think a lot of coal mining in New England. Mm-hmm. But then he's in a marsh. Yeah. That's very close to the coal chute. He walks into a swamp yeah. holding her and she has been desiccating as, as they go. And Tom catches up just in time. And again, the, the, some of the cops are right behind him. They, they see Karis willingly holding the mummified, uh, Amina slash Ananka. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he just walks into the swamp. And we Dead do get, we do get a, a, the, the inspector putting his hand on Tom's shoulder being like, oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's like the sympathetic, like, look, I did see her before. She was a total hottie. Yeah. 
sorry that she turned into an old mummy and is now dead. I did want Tom to get because it's, it's finally the the mummy face that he sees that sinks him. But I want him to be like, oh, keep her. <laughs> you know what? It's probably best my people never get to meet they, Amina. They wouldn't have accepted her, come to think of it. So just go ahead. You go ahead in the swamp. So, ladies and gentlemen, the end of this movie, which isn't good, it's a 61-minute mummy Oh, yeah, of course sequel, it's not good. But it had the balls yep. to give us the downer ending. The girl is... Because it's just over at that point. It's just over. The There's end. No, I, even when she was turned into the mummy, I was still expecting there to be like, well, if we kill Karis or if we return something to the good, then that will undo the curse on her. Nope. No. Or or her in a moment of clarity or something, looking at Karis and going, we were always meant to be together or something where it's just like an acceptance of this is what has happened and this was fate. Mm -hmm. But instead it's just like, well, Karis has her. And now they're very soggy mummy people, I, which I, also don't, I will say why are the I cops am, dragging this thing. Yeah, within like I am minutes? very cute. Yeah, they also just seem to be like, well, that's the end of that. Let's go home. Um, yeah. <laughs> problem solved. Uh, I am very. Should we curious fill that pit up? No, nah, leave the pit. To see, let that be a warning to all people. where the next movie goes. <laughs> Like where do you? Well, maybe that is why they left the pit. Maybe there's a a chance to use the pit in the next movie. I don't. I think the next one. I didn't. I didn't. I don't. I have never seen it, so I have yeah, no idea. Do. I don't know if it. It's a Karis film, yep. but I don't know uh, if it. It's, up, it's LCJ is Karis. I don't believe it's still in Mapleton. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think we stay in. But I could be wrong. But I'm just curious, like how they're gonna explain after this and. Will, well, stay tuned, will, ladies and gentlemen. Anonka That's just two weeks it? away. Yeah. It's just two weeks away. We got more mummy shenanigans. Can I just say, I these are the hardest for me, even yeah. more than the Invisible, because at least with the Invisible series, each one pretty much was doing a different thing. Sometimes they were connected, sometimes they weren't, but they, they it wasn't just a rehash. And sometimes there's a little bit, a little bit of imagination, slight, the mummies have just been bad, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I like the concept of of a, a risen Egyptian mummy. Yeah. But these movies don't do anything with it. Where the, he's just a lumbering non-threat who has no brain of his own, no language, no speaking, no emotion. I'm like, yeah. Mm. I mean, no. Jason Voorhees is kind of the same thing in Friday the 13th, but at least there's a different kind of unstoppable, unknowable evil thing with Jason right, Voorhees. Right, 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 And this is just a lumbering... Look, I'll take any of the Friday 13th over the uh, over these mommy sequels. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, every one of these we watch makes my appreciation for, appreciation for the original yeah. continue to rise. Absolutely. Oh, uh, uh, well, next week on the show, we get all the monsters. All of them. And a hunchback. What? That's, That's what I the love scariest of them movies. all. They're like Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and the Mad Scientist. Yeah, Hunchback. Yeah, <laughs> you ticked all the boxes. Yeah, you have my quarter. You know, I my... wasn't fully in until I heard about that Hunchback. <laughs> then I'm like, whoa! Now <laughs> I am in for something. That is Every a thrill hunchback. that will get me to fill your tills. Having having a Hunchback <laughs> equals monster. Yeah. Sorry, all of you physically differently abled people. What we're saying is, you're a monster. All the classic monsters, clubfoot, yeah. <laughs> cleft palate. Yikes! Ah, uh, that's terrible. But uh, yes, uh, House of Frankenstein. House of Frankenstein. I am. It's better than House of Dracula, I believe. That's if my I memory correctly. as well, too. But it's it's been a while. Those are not ones I go back to. No, but they are they have some significance if only because this takes the the little gem of an idea they started with Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and mm -hmm. saying, Why can't they all be in one storyline? Yeah. Well, we're about to meet some really good answers of why they shouldn't be next week mm -hmm. when we watch House of Frankenstein. Indeed, indeed. We will I'm sure we'll have lots of thoughts. But I will say, if anything, it will probably be better than this. So it's good that we have a mommy movie before it in comparison 
We've got two more mummies, my friend. Uh, two more mummies. Well, one of the mummies, though, I, I well, actually, is, is the worst of the Abbott and Costello monster movies. But still, at least sure. Bun Lure there to soften some of the blow. And it's not Karis. Amen, brother. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, of course, I want to thank the patrons for their generous support. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, but uh, that's going to wrap things up for Campbell and Jones Meets the Monsters this week. I'm John Campbell. I'm Brendan Jones. And remember, there are such things as monsters. Everyone knows. <laughs>